Saskatchewan, it's time to talk sports. The all-new Sports Cage is on the air. Be part of the show. Call 936-6262 or toll-free 1-866-767-0620. And we're always online at sportscage.com. 620 CKRM. Welcome to this special edition of the all-new Sports Cage on 620 CKRM. We're live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. Uh, if you want to join us in a brand new way, you can do it right now. You can watch the live stream of what we're doing on our all-new website, sportscage.com. And if you bookmark that, sportscage.com, that's where everything we do, sports going forward, is where the voice of sports in Saskatchewan will live. My name is Chris Masrick. I'm the director of sports for Harvard Media, looking after the sports cage and Saskatchewan Rough Rider football. As I'd mentioned, we're live from Studio 620, and we're about 25 minutes away from introducing you to the new voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football. We've also got some other surprises planned, including some big free agent signings that are going to be joining the Rider Game Day broadcast. We've got legends, familiar voices, and we will have the general manager and the head coach, Jeremy O'Day and Corey Mace, on the show this afternoon. Uh, as we are live in Studio 620, and you can watch us stream at sportscage.com, Luke Mullinder, color voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Rider, joins us. And uh, on the phone, I think for a lot of us back in 2013, to sum up the Jim Hobson era, when a certain number four lifted that Grey Cup trophy over his head. And I get goosebumps just thinking about that. That cemented that. Darian Durant joining the sports cage with us this afternoon. Darian, would you say that was sort of the pinnacle of the Hobson era? Because you and Luke, you guys were all over that. Absolutely. I think that, uh, especially when you look back at 2009 and 10, when uh, you know the heartbreak that took place those years, uh, to be able to hoist the break up at home, you know, with Jim being from Saskatchewan as well. Uh, like you said, it kind of cemented his legacy. It kind of was that moment where uh, I'm sure he could breathe a big sigh of relief as well for him to be able to accomplish that. With all the turmoil and everything that he's been through throughout his career, uh, that moment was definitely one of the greatest uh, that we could ever imagine. So here's something that I didn't know until I met Luke Mullender in January at Vic's Tavern. I had the beef dip. He, you had tacos, but yeah. then you got a side of fries. Yeah. And yeah. You, he Back said to me, he goes, do you know Darian Durant and I were roommates? Yeah. What, what was that situation <laughs> like when you two go home? Ryder Nation's like, what? Why do we not know about this? There's got to be more to this story. Yeah. Um, who was the responsible one uh, in the roommate situation there? <laughs> Look, I tell you, neither, neither neither of us were responsible at that time. Uh, but honestly, uh, Kitwana Jones. I mean, Kitwana oh, was uh, you know a college teammate of mine, and you know he arrived in Saskatchewan a year before me. And, and he and Luke, you know, they were pretty tight before I got there. So um, I was just ha happened to be a young rookie looking for somewhere to stay. And and mind you, Luke was one of those guys who didn't hold anything against rookies. He, he was open to any and everyone, and I, I must thank him for that because a lot of veterans, when you come in, they, they kind of turned an a, a ugly eye to those rookies. So Luke was very nice to me and welcomed me. So uh, we had some good times, but, man, he's responsible for that 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you told the truth and said neither of us were the responsible ones either. We're just, we're just glad we made it to this point, I think. I can't imagine the dishes and say, hey, it's the all-new Sports Cage, and if you want to watch what we're doing, we're streaming at sportscage.com. Uh, our guest on the Western Pizza guest hotline is rider legend number four, Darian Durant. Perfect pizza with a generous amount of toppings, plus Greek food like souvlaki, ribs, salads, and all the goodness you can't make at home. Call Western Pizza today. Um, I, I was going to ask, you, you didn't start number four. When you came to camp, what, what number were you? I was 14. I was number 14. I was just looking for a number with a four in it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that, that was the best thing I could find. And uh, it took for Kerry to get traded for me to get that number. I hate, I hate that it happened that way, but uh, it worked out for me. I, I remember, uh, you know, it's funny. When you talk about the 2013 story um, and, and watching doubles lift that cup, it's, it's really special for me. I look at it the culmination of the story. And, 
And there's always sort of special parts in people's careers when you know that the person that you're looking at is going to be special. And there were two, there were two parts in Double's career specifically. I remember during camp that he would always walk with like the receivers and they'd always be talking about the future and stuff like yep. that. But I remember in 2007, you know, Coach Austin opened the room to the players. Um, it, was, it was the day before the Grey Cup, uh, or the night before the Grey Cup. And this is when everybody sort of took notice of doubles and said, yeah, this is the future of the program here and we're going to do great things because doubles at that moment was still number 14. You know, it was a <laughs> second. And, and I think that that's when we were over on that Schwann place dub um, out east or whatever. Yes. Um, <laughs> but doubles got up there and literally talked about the leadership that he saw out of Kerry Joseph and how thankful he was to be part of the quarterback room that included Kerry Joseph. And he, he, he talked about the journey that he's watched everybody go on and that he was a part of. And I remember sitting there, man, and Schultz was there, and, and we were like, man, this, this dude's going to be the winner, man. And now look at him, man. This guy's going to go down as one of the greatest here. It's really cool. So 2007, 2013, yeah. the highlights for Ryder Nation. I was there in Calgary in 2009. Does that game still haunt you like it haunts me? I had never heard silence like that in a public place. S since that day, I've never heard a sound because there was no sound after when everything all was said and done. Does that still haunt both of you, that game? Absolutely. I think that, I mean, it's us winning in 2007. And, uh, you know, we had a good run in 2008, but to get back to the Cup in 2009, um, you know, that dynasty talk begins, right? That, you know, if you can get two and then maybe get to that third and four years or something like that, then you become, a, you know, an official dynasty. So when I look back, and I, you know, I was a young guy at the time, but when I look back and, and I kind of realize what that great cup could have done for not only myself and, and, and my legacy, but the, the Rough Rider tradition being that, you know, we had very minimal great cups at the time. So, um, you know, that could have just added to the, you know, everything about being a champion at Saskatchewan. So that one hurts. And, and then to lose that way, oh my God, it's just devastating to lose. But to lose that way, uh, man, it's something you'll never forget. Like you said, it'll haunt you forever. I had to spend the last year of my career in 2012. It was a, it was a magnificent year, but it was with the Montreal Alouettes. And every single opportunity that one of them could, they would bring up 2009 in the conversations. And really? Everything. And it was an entire season of just being annoyed at everybody. But I, you know, looking back on it now, it's unfortunate. You know, there's, there's flag football teams in Regina that are going to be playing this spring that aren't going to make that mistake in that big little <laughs> win the championship game. So. Well, I think 2009 cast such a big shadow. I don't even remember the Grey Cup in 2010. Like, we didn't win it, but that just was yeah. so big that you forget the next year, at least I did, and until you look back, you're like, oh, man. Um, yeah, you, you're still kind of living in that 2009 moment. I mean, to lose in that fashion, to basically have the game won, <laughs> I mean, no time was on the clock. I mean, uh, to have the game won and lose like that in the biggest game of the year, it, 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 like you said, it's almost like 2010 didn't even happen. It, it, it's like a blur to me as well. It's crazy. Yeah, and the, the problem, and the, the part of that game, I mean, it's almost the same situation, but just a different, out, uh, just a different way it played out. But people got to remember that they, we had them there too. They had to hit a I know. hail mary to uh, against I know. Omar Morgan, who had played the defensive position just right, and and they came down with the catch. But I think that that's the the beauty of football. It's why everybody's so excited about the training camp coming up, is because on any given day, just one play can change the course of an entire history of your career and and and, a, and an organization. It very much can. Uh, it's the all-new Sports Cage. We're streaming. You can watch us at sportscage.com. Thank you for listening on 620 CKRM. You can also download the podcast on Spotify and Apple. It's Chris Masrick, Luke Mullinder, and Ryder legend number four, Darian Durant. So um, you probably still, to this day, get recognized all the time. What's it like now that you're not in Saskatchewan and you know, you're still part of Ryder Nation? 
is it still nice when people come up or say, hey, Darian, hey, Darian, hey, doubles, hey, number four, will you sign this? You, still get re you must still get recognized all the time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there are tons of Ryder fans here in Toronto as well. Uh, of course, it doesn't happen as much where I get recognized, but there are times. And, uh, you know, I, I had on a Ryder jacket today when I went up went and picked my kids up from school. So uh, I always keep Ryder gear on. Um, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a huge fan base here in Toronto as well. And, uh, you know, I, I do miss it sometimes, especially when you're away from the passion, the energy of, of Ryder fans. Um, you know, and, and you kind of relive those good old glory days, so to speak. Uh, you do miss it somewhat. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to kind of start to get back involved and, and be around a little bit more. And uh, I'm looking forward to that because those were the best years of my life for sure. And, uh, you know, like I said, I miss those times and, and I'm looking forward to getting it back. So what does Darian Durant do today? I, I, Luke kind of filled me in, but fill in the rest of Ryder Nation that's listening. So we know you as star quarterback, number four, lifting the Grey Cup. Who is Darian Durant today, and what is his day filled with? Because I think it's a little different yeah, well, than tossing footballs <laughs> to guys like Andy Fantuz. Yeah, it's a lot different now. I'm, I am a 100% devoted husband and father. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to... Um, you know, wait until I re retire to have kids. And, uh, you know, my oldest is six. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. So they pretty much take up all my time. I, I take them to and from school, uh, you know, prepare the house, get their clothes ready, do their laundry, everything that comes with, you know, being at home and, and, and being a good father. That's what my day consists of. And We need you know, to send Gordy your way. Fortunate enough. Excuse me? We need to send Gordy your way. Get the laundry taken care of. Properly, you know? <laughs> I wish I could send him this laundry. We have three babies. They, you know, they <laughs> eat some spaghetti and it's all over their clothes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just enjoying that. And, and like I said, I was very fortunate enough to, uh, you know, save up a good bit of money while I played. So I was able to get into real estate some. So, um, you know, I'm just... Uh, enjoying life at this moment and uh, you know like i said i'm looking forward to getting back involved with with rider nation i think that's uh, my calling for sure well we won't let the cat out of the bag yet but we've got some big plans and uh, you may <clears throat> see and hear darian and luke a little more than you're used to these days but it's going to be a, a, and a good thing we're going to do that but we got a lot of things to unveil today and um, one of this and darian we want to thank you for your time and you know you're always welcome to come on back even without your old roommate here then we can really get down to the dirt because last night at dinner luke told us some stories about you guys playing call of duty you and andy fantuz and luke akonji or whatever and it used to get heated yeah, like, I don't, I, like I, I don't know there's way more to that story um oh know, yeah the good old halo days and call I, was oh, I was telling oh, about that man oh, the halo, the days. halo days not yeah. call of duty sorry my, my bad my bad uh in a yeah. couple in a couple minutes here, we're going to uh, introduce you to the new voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football and the rest of the Rider game day team. It's a big day here on the all-new sports cage on 620 CKRM. We are live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium, and you can actually watch what we're doing. If you can't join us this afternoon, we're streaming the show live at sportscage.com. Uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, get ready for it, Rider Nation. The brand new voice of Ryder football is just minutes away on CKRM. What color is my truck? Uh, camo. A little green with splashes of mud. Ah, uh, I need a car wash and a fill up. You need Sherwood Co-op gas bars. But I don't want to scuff my new sneaks. Sherwood Co-op is a full service gas bar. They'll fill up your tank and add on a touchless car wash while you stay in your truck and... Keep my sneaks clean. You got it. Sherwood Co-op gas bars. We are members. We are owners. We are Sherwood Co-op. It's 1984. Crystal and Shane are adjusting their TV antenna so they can watch Dallas when they realize they need to cover their hardwood floors with green carpet. Why? 80s flooring trends were wild. So be thankful it's 2024 and that flooring superstore has what you want. From vinyl plank, vinyl tile, hardwood, laminate, and everything in between, their stock is immediately available with professional installation for residential or commercial spaces. Flooring Superstore. Quality floor covering at the best price. FlooringSuperstoreRegina.ca 
90s country lives in Dauphin, Manitoba this summer at the spectacular Dauphin's Country Fest, June 28th to 30th. Sunday, it's the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Jody Messina, Mark Chestnut, as well as Doc Walker, Donna Merrill, and many more. Don't miss out. Weekend and day passes are on sale now. Early bird pricing ends April 30th. Hey, it's Matt Fisher, General Manager at Crestview Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. April is Customer Appreciation Month, and we are celebrating in a big way. Get employee pricing all month long on remaining 2023s. Check out our huge selection of Rams and take a test drive. Plus, get a $500 accessories bonus on all 2024 Rams and Jeep Wranglers. Don't miss Customer Appreciation Month at Crestview Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. We're gearing up for our 620 CKRM and Harvard Media Spring Egg Trades and Equipment online auction. And we want your business on board. All you got to do is provide items like gift cards, experiences, services, or whatever cool product you have. In exchange, we'll give you a world-class marketing campaign. No entry fee or cash outlay. Just a good old trade deal. A portion of the proceeds from winning bids will go to support local charities in our community. Just set up 620CKRM.com or HarvardMedia.com. Terms and conditions apply. A few years ago, I was doing okay, but the rising cost of living has made my credit card bills go through the roof, and I don't know how to handle that anymore. Times are tough right now. The cost of living is causing many to fall into debt through no fault of their own. It's easy to feel overwhelmed and stressed, but there are options that can help you get back on your feet. My name is Jasmine Brown, and I'm a licensed insolvency trustee. I can help you find a solution to become debt-free right here in Regina. Visit bdodebt.ca to learn more. Back to the all-new Sports Cage. Text 306-936-6262. 620 CKRM. We're live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. I'm Chris Masrick, the Director of Sports for Harvard Media. We look after the sports cage, and we're the flagship radio station of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football. And we've been teasing it for a while. Um, it's for the person that you're going to meet here in a couple of minutes. It's probably the hardest secret he's ever had to keep. So, without further ado, Rider Nation, if you're ready, everybody here at Mosaic Stadium, gang, here we go. Saskatchewan. The heart of the prairies. Where a community is more than a word, it's a way of life. And when it comes to sports, there's one team that unites us all. A storied franchise that deeply resonates in the hearts of our people. From the legendary heroes of the past. Reed again gets the call. He may be gone. Touchdown. A 35-yard attempt for David Ridgway. It's up. Saskatchewan Rough Riders come back to Toronto and win. Snap is out and bubbles a pick on six to To the unyielding spirit of today. If you're from Saskatchewan, you're born into bleeding green. I think that's been passed down from generation to generation. If you want to be somewhere where where it matters, um, <laughs> and it matters here. There's no secret about, you know, what uh, Rider Nation brings. Uh, the number one thing, I mean, you know, look behind me. You know what I mean? Like, look at that and think about the people who are gonna be sitting in those seats. There has never been a better time to be a sports fan in Saskatchewan. The all new Sports Cage is proud to introduce the new voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football. I'm Dave Thomas, the new voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I'm born and bred in Saskatchewan and very proud of it. I always believed in working hard, rolling up your sleeves, and that's what I have a sense that this team is going to do all season long. Roll up their sleeves, come to work for one another, and be something that we all can be proud of. The opportunity that you have to consume the sports cage is going to be incredible, and you've got an opportunity, border to border to border, to cover Saskatchewan sports. I think it's going to be something new for our province that is going to set the bar and the standard for excellence. Get ready, Saskatchewan, and get ready, Rider Nation. Your Rider broadcast team, 
Dave Thomas and Luke Mullender. Pre-game, halftime, and post-game hosts, Justin Dunk and Wes Cates. And the new lead host of Sports Cage, Barney Shinkarak. The all new Sports Cage will redefine the way we experience writer football. It's a Sports Talk Radio Revolution. The all new Sports Cage, weekdays 3 to 6, 620 CKRM. Oh, Dave Thomas, new voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football. Thank you. How hard has it been to keep this secret? I can't imagine what you've been going through since you got the news that this gig is yours. You know, I can't even go Christmas season without busting out to my kids what I got them for Christmas. So can you imagine how hard this was to keep? It was insane. Yeah, I, oh man, I can only imagine. So even up to this point, you were telling me yesterday, there's people that you are very close to that you have not been able to tell this awesome news to. I hope now you can just let out a deep sigh and go, all right, everybody, here's what I'm doing, and we're happy to have you. Welcome to Rider Nation. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be uh, one hell of a ride. Look at the team that's surrounded around you. Look at everybody here. We're chatting with Dave Thomas, the new voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football. You can watch what we're doing on our all-new website, sportscage.com. We're live at Mosaic Stadium in Studio 620. Um, so we're going to have Glenn Suter after 4 o'clock chat with you and basically ask you and kind of, he's the resident in Rider Nation here, and if you being the new guy, <laughs> um, we're going to let Suits talk to you. And then we're also going to have uh, Dave chat with Corey Mace and Jeremy O'Day right at 5 o'clock as well. So if you can stick around for that. Um, growing up, always the dream job to be the voice of Rider Nation when you figured this is what I'm going to do for a living. Yeah, very much, right? Like, I, I'm from Weyburn, Saskatchewan. I'm a Saskatchewan kid through and through, right? So everybody dreams that they're going to grow up and they're going to play for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in our province, especially if you take on football, which I did. But then you realize very soon that, number one, you don't have the talent, commitment, or willingness to listen to your coaches, so it's probably not going to work out in the long run. So it worked out great that I was discovered in a McDonald's drive through and somebody's drive through speaker heard me, and they said, hey, that guy's going to be good on the radio, at which point I'm like, you know what? I love sports, and I'm just going to keep working because... That's what every kid does. You start small and you keep working and building and you hope you're gonna fulfill your dream and here we are today. So you get into the radio business, but then when, does, when did the sports bug take over? Because you've done football, you've done hockey, you've done the CIS, you've done the Western Hockey League, so when did you're like, okay, this, this, there's something there. I know I'm, there's something there. Well, I had a teacher once that told me when you grow up that you need to be able to find a job that's like going to play. Because if you go to work like going to play, it's not a real job then. And all of a sudden, somewhere along the line, somebody started paying me to watch sports and talk about what I saw. And I'm like, this is a pretty good job, you know? Like, I can go ahead and I can sit at home and I can have my feet up watching the Ryder game. And then my wife says, well, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm working, dear. So it's the best job ever. So you get a phone call, or, or was it a text, was it an email, and all of this, and then you say, here's a thing about something like this, a job like this. It's one thing to be asked about it or get a chance to talk about it, but then you're like, okay, I hope that this, how, how does it go through? So when you found out you were the new voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football, what is that like? You know what, it's, it's a dream come true. And it's also an opportunity to recognize the people that have helped you along the way, right? Like, okay. you talked about this room. There's an amazing team of people here, and some of which I've known for two days. But they're still amazing because they welcome me in with open arms. And I've always been a part of team sport and team play. And so the second that I heard it, I was like, you got to be kidding me. This guy from Wayburn, Saskatchewan, is now going to be able to go ahead and provide the narrative to our team? This is insane. At which point, like I said, I look back at some of the people that gave me an opportunity to proceed and the people that are here today that are giving me an opportunity to go ahead and, like I say, be your eyes, ears, and provide the feel of Rider Nation. But on the flip side of that, there's a huge <laughs> responsibility you just mentioned to Rider Nation. This is a serious thing. Okay, there's the premier, there's the head coach, and then there's the play-by-play -play guy, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Probably the three people in the province everybody has an opinion on. So there's that, those are... 
Those are some big shoulders you got to have. There's a lot of weight on them as of about five minutes ago. <laughs> True. You missed the backup quarterback, though. Everybody's oh, yeah, got the backup, sorry, backup, backup quarterback. quarterback. Sorry. Totally above the radio guy, right? If, it, if it is Mason Fine, this your story. No disrespect, <laughs> Mason. We, we should have mentioned you in that. Uh, you know what? That's, a, that's part of the privilege. Part of the privilege is people go ahead and they criticize you. End of the day, we, we may not like, we may absolutely love, but at the end of the day, we're all one team and we all come together for it, and that's what we're here. That's what's behind us. Like, man, if somebody gave me a football right now, I want to go run down on the field. Now, I'm a bigger guy, so it's going to be a long run, but it still would be a lot of fun. I would like to see if Mullinder could tackle you. We could get Fairholm <laughs> to throw it, and maybe Wes Cates to run it. I, I don't know if we can... Oh, they're paying... No, they're not... Minus me, that would be the dream team, but there's no way I want Mullinder at all tackling me, please. Somebody said call their agent. They're not doing anything without a signed <laughs> contract. It's the all-new Sports Cage on 620 CKRM. It's brought to you by Sherwood Co-op from locally grown fresh produce, condiments, and Western Canadian beef. Your barbecue tastes, base, tastes better when you shop at Sherwood Co-op food stores. We're live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. Uh, it's the all-new Sports Cage, and we're streaming this at sportscage.com. Dave Thomas is the voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football from this day going forward. And a little background, you just came from Saskatoon. You were working at a radio station there. You're coming here to Regina. Who is Dave Thomas? Who's in the family? Who else is joining Rider Nation when... Uh, all of this gets rolling. Well, my wife and two sons okay. are, are going to be uh, making the trek down. And again, I, I mentioned it uh, to Mr. Rob Vanstone, who's here, and, and was so kind enough to take a couple of moments just to talk to a kid from Weyburn. Who does that? But uh, again, I, I won the lottery in getting this job, but I won the lottery when I got my family. So uh, they're going to be joining us in Rider Nation. We've got uh, some other friends and family, of course, here in, Ra in Regina. Uh, some of which do not know yet. Well, uh, but judging by the number of times my phone's gone off oh, in the last it's, it's three, buzzing. four minutes, I'm assuming they now know that we're moving to Regina, so it's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> and if anybody's a realtor in the audience, yeah. <laughs> somebody needs a place. Anybody? Anybody? Quick commission. He's got to be here. We got, let's see, training. Yeah. First preseason game is in uh, May 20th. Say, yeah. May 20th. That's yeah. in 40 days. All right, we're going to take a break and come back. We're going to introduce some of the rest of the... Uh, Rider Nation game day crew. We've got some free agent signings to announce on the show today, some big names that we're going to bring on board. So we'll be back. It's the all new Sports Cage, and we're streaming. You can watch what's happening at sportscage.com. It's the all new Sports Cage on 620 CKRM. If buying new isn't for you, try a GM certified pre owned vehicle from Capital GMC. We're stocked up on 2023 GM buybacks, Blazers, Equinoxes, XT5s, all with low mileage, awesome features, low rates, and pricing that can't be beat. All GM certified pre owned vehicles come with a 150 plus point inspection, a 30 day 2500 kilometer exchange privilege, manufacturer's warranty, and roadside assistance. Shop over 300 in stock GM certified pre owned units at CapitalGMC.ca. Do you have dirty, grimy, smelly bins? Are you disgusted by the flies and maggots? Are you worried about the spread of bacteria and disease? Ew, it's on my shoe. Are you embarrassed about your dirty bin's appearance? Look away, I'm hideous. Are you frustrated with the lack of cleaning equipment? Uh... Let Bin Spa do the dirty work for you. They provide mobile residential and commercial bin cleaning and pressure washing services. Just schedule a visit. Leave your bin on the street and Bin Spa will clean it right there. Keep your bins clean. Binspa.ca Synergy AG, your locally owned independent crop input retail. Proudly serving rural communities and surrounding areas of Govan, Lumsden, Provost, LaJord, Yorkton, Balcaris, Grenfell, St. Brew, and Melfort. Providing innovations in seed genetics, crop protection, crop nutrition, and agronomy services. Call your local Synergy AG representative to book your custom seed treating for the upcoming season. Many customized packages available. Your independent option that is welded to rural communities. Synergy AG, roots you can count on. Dagelman Industries has been engineering tough, high-performance equipment for 60 years. See for yourself with our industry-leading Dagelman Bulldozer Blades. Dagelman engineers, designs, and individually builds all bulldozer tractor fit-ups to ensure proper mounting locations are the best spot to push from, protecting your tractor investment. Visit the Build-A-Blade feature on Dagelman.com for more information. Dagelman, engineered tough. Best row. Don't miss a minute of the all-new Sports Cage. Podcasts are posted at sportscage.com. 620 CKRM. 
The Sports Cage is live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. We're streaming at sportscage.com. If you want to join us, make sure to give us a follow, put us in the bookmark. Uh, and if you can't catch the show or you can catch part of it, we're always going to be doing the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Download and subscribe. It's a big show today as we introduce the new voice of Rider Nation. That would be Dave Thomas. He's going to be calling games this year. And as we started at the top of the show, we've got some familiar faces, some old veterans, and some free agent signings that we're bringing on board with the Rider Nation game day broadcast team. And one of those free agent signings, you may know him as the top insider when it comes to the CFL. He would be like our Elliot Friedman or Frank Saravalli when it comes to hockey. And he's now part of Rider Nation from Three Down Nation. Justin Dunk, welcome to Rider Nation. Welcome to Ryderville. How are Thanks, you? Thanks, buddy? buddy. Pretty jacked up to be here, man. Honestly, you can feel the energy in the building here today. I know we're obviously on the radio as well, but the passion here is <laughs> second to none. So I'm pretty lucky to be part of the team. I think you found out last night in a uh, in a private room at a restaurant, and I, after about an hour, I pulled you aside. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of people that are <laughs> they're all in. I I don't know if I could have expressed that. Uh, in a conversation or on a Zoom call to be uh, to see the passion of all of this. So for anybody that doesn't know Justin Dunk or hasn't been on 3downnation.com, um, you're a former quarterback. What's, what's, the, what's the Justin Dunk bio? If A&E is doing a biography on you, grew up where, high school where, college where? Cole's nose version. I really don't like talking about myself, but grew up <laughs> just outside Guelph, Ontario, actually a little place called Guelph Nickel Township on a family farm. We had about 100 Holstein milking cows and about uh -oh. 600 sows fair to uh -oh. finish. I'm going to get into my farm talk a little bit. Oh, but... no, Rider wow. Nation is going to love you. If you grow up on a farm with cows and pigs, oh, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, made our own feed the whole bit, about 2,000 acres. So I don't think it's all the kind of crops that they have out there, or out here, I should say. Uh, mainly corn and soybeans out there, but grew up there, got into football when I was in grade school through touch, and then played it all the way through. And actually, I remember at my high school, before I got there, I was in grade seven and eight, and I was watching through like the chain link fence, and this quarterback was playing for John F. Ross CVI, which is where I went, the Ross Royals, named Michael Falls. He ended up going down to the University of Toledo, being a backup to Bruce Gradkowski, who played in the NFL for a while, and I thought, if this guy can do it for my high school, like I can at least go somewhere and, and play university ball. And that ended up happening, stayed at home, played at the University of Guelph, wanted to kind of get that program turned around a little bit. And when it came to the CFL stuff, Canadian quarterbacks weren't really being looked at at that time in 2009, 2010, the same way they are now, which I think they should be with you know, Nathan Rourke or Trey Ford. And I kind of realized, well, football's not gonna last forever, like Dave was talking about earlier, that I should probably get into this broadcasting thing. And here we are now. So Three Down Nation, I, I knew of you, but I think a lot of us came to really know you. What year was that that you basically blew up the CFL draft at TSN and you had every pick before they did? What year was that? And were they angry at you after that? I actually deleted that from my mind. I can't remember the year. I don't, because some... it was awesome watching them. This is, oh, yeah. Whoever this guy is, this Justin Dunk, this is awesome because he is blowing them out of the water. You think it was awesome, and maybe Dave does oh. too, but there were some TSN executives that didn't really no. like it. Okay, so well. I stopped doing it after that for that reason, but... It was kind of fun. It was interesting. So what year was that? Man, I can't even remember, honestly. 2018, 2019? No, I think it was a bit before. Okay. But now you've become the, the elite insider in the CFL. How many times has your phone, if Dave's phone can't stop buzzing, how many times has your <laughs> phone buzzed in about the last half hour with everybody? This is some of the worst kept secrets on the internet. I got to say, these announcers <laughs> we're doing here, yeah. if you've been following along <laughs> yeah. online, there's some people that have you know, putting it out there. They want Justin Dunk on Justin Dunk saying, <laughs> yeah. we know where he's going. I got dunked on a little bit, but not as bad as Dave Thomas. I think his was a more worst kept secret, but definitely been a lot of messages of congratulations. The riders have been very welcoming, you know, from Craig Reynolds to Ariel Zur and you know, everybody else there that we've met and had dinner with last night. It's been a great group. And honestly, everybody at Harvard Media, you talk about Matt Hill, George Leith, on down to you, Chris, who made that initial phone call out of nowhere in February, just before free agency, what happens to be the busiest time in the <laughs> CFL calendar, like, hey, do you want to come fly out to Calgary and meet the team here? So 
credit to you for making the call, and I'm really excited that Harvard was so excited about me. I'd have to give my wife, Abby, a lot of credit because uh, it was Valentine's Day, uh, and she's like, well, what are we? And I said, oh, I said, I may be meeting this with this guy, this football guy from Ontario for Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. like, oh. You had to tell my girlfriend that I was going out to Calgary for Valentine's Day, <laughs> I man. I for Valentine's Day, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, and thank you. Um, cause that, no, you know, thank you for this while working out or whatever. It makes me feel a whole lot yeah, better for, for bowing out on Valentine's Day that day. So Justin is going to host the pregame, the halftime, and then the postgame show. So Rider Nation, if you like to be a crazy caller and call us at 936-6262, mm -hmm. Justin will be the guy that we, you will be chatting with and he will filter you on or cut you off and, <laughs> and get you rolling or whatever. So you're doing that. It's got to be exciting. I mean... You know, I've, I've seen you do other stuff. I've seen you do some CS, CIS. I've seen you do some CFL. But is it like what Corey May said, that the Ryder Nation thing is different because it matters here and people care? Definitely. And you mentioned CIS or CIA or U Sports. And that's where I met Dave Thomas, right? We've done games together in the Canada West for a number of years. And as much as there's a really great following, I think, for the University of Saskatchewan Huskies, that this is just a whole other level, right? You can see it. In my social media mentions, whenever I tweet about the riders or write a story about the riders, you can see the passion here. You can feel it. I've been here multiple times on game days. The riders last year were nice enough, I should say, to you know allow me to bring one of my nephews, Elliot, to a game here. And just the spectacle of the thing, he loved it. He wants to come back. He's been asking me along <laughs> with his brother, Liam, my other nephew, hey, Uncle Justin, when are you going back out west again so we can go to a Rough Riders game? So it just took one of those. Now they've been to an Argos game before. They've been up close and personal with some of the Stampeders when there was a practice at the University of Guelph, but nothing, I think, captivated them like the potential of going to a Rough Riders game, and I think that shows you the energy around this franchise. A lot of people are excited. You, you know, can feel it, too. Like a lot of, oh. there's, a, there's, there's a huge buzz of what's, what's going on. There's a free agency coaching staff. I mean, you can just feel it in the room today. Well, and this guy has got so much energy and enthusiasm <laughs> and genuine care because when you're talking to athletes, when you're talking to anybody that's in this room, I know how much you care about their story. And I think that's what sets you apart. And I know you're humble, but you should take that as credit because you do such a terrific job of being with people. Appreciate it, man. I mean, you're the same way, right? We just want to do the best job we can, I think, in this situation, you know, for the Rough Riders, for the athletes that play this game, that put their blood, sweat, and tears into this for the province of Saskatchewan, and that's why the Riders are such a prominent team, you know, as you said in the video, from border to border to border. Now, obviously, everybody's going to be wanting your take on the team, so is it too early to start giving takes, especially when we got that big draft coming up here at the end of the month in your eyes? It's probably never too early to give takes in Ryderville. So, yeah, you know, right. I'll tell you, I do really like the energy that Corey Mace has infused into this team. And, you know, we had the story up on 3downnation.com about him multiple times in his interview saying, I want this effing job. Like, he wants to be here. And I think you can sense that from the people of Ryderville that I've talked to in person or interacted with online, that they can feel him. Right? that when he talks about wanting players that want to be here when it gets colder and that you're going to have to win games here in the cold, that that's real, it's genuine. Corey Mace is a genuine person. So I think when you just look at that as a foundational piece, Jeremy O'Day getting much more comfortable in the general manager's chair, and I think from a public perspective as well, and then you look at Trevor Harris, if you can keep him healthy, it's going to be the major question mark all year. And I do think they have a chance to do that after bringing in Jermarcus Hardrick, making him the highest paid American offensive lineman in the league, that this is a very intriguing Rough Riders team. Yes, Corey Mace is in his first year, but I think they can surprise some people. I do too. And we all know that <laughs> what's, the games don't matter till after Labor Day, essentially. And you got a shot. You just got to get in. You just got to get, look at the Montreal Alouettes. Like you just, mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. got to get in and get mm -hmm. hot at the right time it's exciting training camp in saskatoon uh, a lot of this is going on so as far as what you and th let's mention so three down nation it's not just justin dunk you're who are your who are your partners if, in, if people haven't been to the site before and you want to know the the skinny on pretty much anything going on in the cfl there's you is it jc abbott yep jc abbott and john hodge i would say were the like three kind of day-to-day -day main guys that are behind the scenes running the site and then we have a couple dedicated Rough Riders 
reporters, I guess we'll call them Joel Gasson and Brendan McGuire. And we have a person essentially assigned to each team around the country to follow those teams really closely. But the main guys on the site and the heart and soul of it are JC and John. And, you know, without them, opportunities like this for me wouldn't be possible because of the hard work that they put in behind the scenes. Everybody thinks when you guys come out with a story, and I saw this firsthand, you were in my car. <laughs> Your phone was going off. And you'd read something, and you're like, okay. Give us a percentage. You put out 15 to 20% of what you know, maybe. Is that high? And 80% is stuff that never, ever sees the light of day or never, ever comes out? <laughs> That's a really good question, actually. And there was something very, very recently that happened that will hopefully never see the light of day that, you know, I won't put out there. But I think you're probably pretty close because you go through a lot of it and, you know, what is actually meaningful, right? And then the other part of it is what is going to, you know, keep those long-lasting relationships, right? Because to do that kind of a job, if you're inside reporting, you need to have trust. That's the number one thing, right? And I think Dave knows that from covering young athletes, right? You have to gain their trust. Mm -hmm. The coaching staffs, especially, you know, even at the university level, it's a competition all the time. So you have to gain the trust and keep those relationships for the long haul. So I would say, you know, you're probably about right, 80, 20. There's a lot of things that, you know, come across my phone. I don't know if you read it and saw whatever that was. <laughs> but that don't you're necessarily not allowed to make say it. No, public. because in, in my car, it was free agency. And it, you said it was, it was an agent reaching out and just, you know, to, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, really? like. Agents are like texting, like it's all this, not just coaches and general managers, it's far on down the line uh, to do that. So, well, welcome to uh, Rider Nation. We really appreciate it. This is the all new sports cage on 620 CKRM. A little bit of a different sound today and a whole different look. You can now watch the sports cage as we're streaming today's show on our website, thesportscage.com. Uh, anytime, and if you want to text the show, we'd love to get your comments, get your questions for the new broadcast crew. You can text the all-new Sports Cage on the Capital Ford Lincoln text line, Capital Ford Lincoln, Saskatchewan's number one Ford retailer, CapitalFordLincoln.com. It's 306-936-6262. Uh, all right, we're going to take a break and come back. And um, like we said, after 4 o'clock, Glenn Suter will join us. Suits, who's a beauty, by the way, rider <laughs> legend, CFL legend. He's going to ask Dave the tough questions. He's going to ask mm, everything uh -huh. that Rider Nation wants to know. Suter's asking. Suter's in charge of this interview. <laughs> He's going to be asking Dave Thomas. We're going to take and come back. We've got another free agent signing to announce here to the uh, Rider Game Day broadcast crew, and we'll get him on. It's the all-new Sports Cage on 620 CKRM. 620 CKRM Classified Country is back. We're giving our listeners a chance to attend an exclusive concert that is classified. A mystery artist will be hitting the stage April 27th at the Turvey Center. Until then, it's a secret. Until the moment the performance begins, there are no tickets. The only way you can attend this exclusive concert is by listening to 620 CKRM Classified Country. Sponsored by Reliance Heath Water Heater Rentals, SAS Battery, Regina Motor Products, and the voice of Saskatchewan, 620 CKRM. Be prepared for what Mother Nature throws at us because we never know what kind of wild weather is in store. Shorty Generators is authorized and trained to service all the major home standby generators, offering the largest selection of generators in Saskatchewan. Generac, Kohler, Champion, Cummins, and Briggs and & Stratton. Now is the time to get your generator serviced and ready for the upcoming storm season. To book your service or to learn more about generator maintenance, visit shortygenerators.ca. The generator experts. Truck month is on now at Chevrolet. Get the 2024 Silverado 1500 RST at 0% financing for up to 60 months with standard Chevrolet safety assist plus a trailering package that includes an easy lift power lock and release tailgate. You'll be looking for any reason to get out on the road. Hey, Dave, spring cleaning? Need a truck? I can take those shelves. No? You sure? Okay. Michelle, you need a truck? I've got a truck. See your Chevrolet dealer for more details. When a patient is in need, it's never too far. It's the fourth annual Critical Care on the Air Radiothon for Star Saskatchewan. Stars will be there for the next patient in need, but we can't do it without your help. 
The Critical Care on the Air Radiothon will be presented today by BHP. To donate, visit criticalcareontheair.ca or call the Viterra Lifeline at 1-877-50-STARS. All funds raised stay in Saskatchewan to help STARS mission to provide critical care anywhere. The all-new sports cage. Be part of the show. Call 936-6262 or toll-free 1-866-767-0620. 620 CKRM. It's the all-new sports cage live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. Big show today. Dave Thomas is the new voice of Saskatchewan Rough Rider football. Justin Dunk is our new pregame. Halftime and post-game host, and another free agent signing to the Ryder Game Day team. You may know him, or you would you you know what he looks like, and you know what he sounds like. He was the face of global sports in Saskatchewan for the past six years. Is that is that accurate? Six that's years. That's ballpark. Yeah, that's ballpark. Ballpark. Yeah, sure. Um, Derek Bidwell. Welcome to Rider Nation and the Rider Game Day broadcast. So Derek is going to be not only on the sports cage, you're going to hear him every week. He's also going to be the sideline reporter uh, for Rider Games this year. Welcome to the team, man. How does it feel to officially be part of Rider Nation? It's great. You know, I never thought that I would be ever mentioned as a free agent signing in anything, so it does feel kind of cool, <laughs> right? I was talking with Justin about it before. Yeah, looking forward to being a part, of course, of the green and white broadcast crew, uh, being a born and uh, raised a Saskatchewan person as well as we heard Dave Thomas talk about, very exciting for me. So uh, yes, looking forward to it and uh, a great team assembled. I must take me out of it, but everybody else, a great team <laughs> assembled for sure. Uh, but your football lineage, I mean, let's, I don't know we're in a little bit of enemy territory, originally uh, both of us being Saskatoon. You're a Hilltop alumni. Now, yeah. keep in mind, I mean, you came from a, a great football program or whatever, so football's in your blood, correct? Oh, for sure, yeah. And then so, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of enemy, enemy territory. Normally when I'm in Regina, of course, or when I was much younger, I was a member of the Hilltops, of course, this would be enemy territory. But, uh, yeah, once, once uh, that was in my past, I just focused on, of course, as Dave was saying, doing something that you love to do, which brought him into broadcasting. Did the same for me. And uh, I did have some time as well when I was in Calgary before moving back to Saskatchewan. Uh, talk about enemy territory, working with the Calgary Stampeders. So I do have a little bit of experience with uh, being on the sidelines as well uh, in the CFL. But much, this will be a completely different thing, of course, <laughs> being here um, in the home province uh, for me and being on the sidelines for the riders is completely different. I do have to tell you a quick story, and this is absolutely true. When I was on the sidelines for my first game, uh, at, yeah, as uh, a member of the Calgary Stampeders, I guess, broadcast crew. I'm on the sidelines, they're playing the Riders. Somebody threw a long bomb to somebody on the Riders, I'm watching it go, he catches it, I go, yeah! Right on the sidelines for the Stampeders. <laughs> Jay McNeil, who's now the president of the Calgary Stampeders, said, me, uh, said to me in some colorful language, just said, hey, Bids, he was joking, but he said, hey, Bids, remember where the blank you are. So I did lose my... <laughs> It just comes natural, I know. naturally to me to be excited about the Riders. So, Dunk, just keep in mind when the game's going, it's okay to cheer. It's no. okay every once in a while. You, and you've got to be impartial, but it's okay to cheer. All right, we're all, there's only one color here, and it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, your journey, you've seen sports in Saskatchewan, and let's go back to the sports cage, and you've seen the sports landscape change and then the world changed over the past three years and getting back and everybody has come back around are you feeling the same sort of buzz and anticipation about this year's rider team like we kind of all are oh i think so for sure i mean just reading a lot of the things that one of the great writers here i had a chance to talk to him as soon as i walked in rob vanstone i was reading some of his columns recently with uh, the riders and on their web page and one of the things I read was from Trevor Harris and him talking about, well, he's basically one of the new guys too because he was only here for five games last year. So this edition of the Riders, I think there's a lot of, a lot of players uh, that everybody can be excited about. I think this edition is going to be far different. And, um, you know, until the season starts, let's just play optimistic, right? Like, what, <laughs> why bother with pessimistic? Let's just be optimistic until there's something to be pessimistic about. So right now, let's just talk about all the great things that have happened. And, and uh, yeah, I think with this edition of the Riders, the fans have a lot to be excited about, and we're definitely going to play it that way for sure until we get to the start of the year. And I think I think good things are going to happen. 
You've been up in Saskatoon for a while, obviously, and covering training camp up there. What's the reception like, and how do the people receive it when the riders come to town? Oh, well, the riders being in Saskatoon is a huge thing. It's a tradition, and it's, thing, it's something that they really look forward to. There was a time there when, it, you know, it was talked about that maybe they weren't going to be doing training camp possibly in Saskatoon. I don't know if that was really going to happen or not, but I know that everybody was really disappointed because... For a lot of people around there too, so many people make, make the trip to Regina to this place to watch their beloved riders. But sometimes, whether you're talking about the farming community or uh, just for whatever reason, they're not able maybe to make the trip up to Regina because they're farther towards that end of the province. Well, they make the trip to Saskatoon to at least get a chance to yeah. see them live in some way, even though it's just training camp, they just want to be there to be around the fans live. For a lot of people, it's in addition to coming to yeah. Queen City. But uh, for some, it's the only chance they get. And uh, we love them there. I know the university loves hosting them there. And it, it's a big deal. And it, it's well, great that they, they split up their time as best they can because they are the province's team. Yeah. No, I remember as a kid. Now, this was way before driving down to Regina to come to games as a family was cool. The only exposure we had uh, as the riders in the 70s and 80s, and keep in mind, there wasn't a lot of games on TV, yeah. was training camp in Saskatoon. You'd go to Griffin Stadium. You'd maybe sit in the stands or hang out over the fence, and that was our pro football team. And then there'd be the odd game on TV, or you'd wait, that is it going to be blacked out? And those were the years when we were doing telethons and stuff like that, and you're trying yeah. to raise money to save the team. Like, from what it is now to what it used to be, like, I remember we were doing a telethon uh, at the Town and Country Mall in Moose Jaw uh, when I was working for CHAB, where we are trying to raise money to save the team in the early 90s. I want to say it was Milson Jones who wouldn't come on the radio till he got his free meal at Smitty's or something. It was something crazy like that, but he wouldn't come on because he was promised a free meal and we were, you know, trying to do... So to see where it came from and being where... And the teams were so bad. And where we are now. And where we are now. And the optimism. And yeah. the optimism. Derek Bidwell. Uh, this is great. Let's see, what are we doing here? We got a one more time. Oh yeah, no, this is great. So Derek Bidwell is going to be your sideline reporter mm -hmm. for all Saskatchewan Rough Rider home games. He's also going to be on the sports cage along with our new lead host, Barney Shinkrut, and he's going to be a contributor to sportscage.com. Uh, um, let's real quick, because you've got an eye on this. Um, Moose Jaw Warriors, Swift Current Broncos. Yeah. Saskatoon Blades, Red Deer Rebels. Who makes, what two teams make it through to the next round of the Western Hockey League playoffs? Uh, well... It's easier to say uh, it's easier to say about the second matchup because uh, you know I, I won't get a lot of uh, heckling for that. But I mean, in the first one, Swift Current or Moose Jaw? Oh, I don't know. I'm just going to go Moose Jaw because more guys I used to play with on the Hilltops live in Moose Jaw, and oh. they're diehard fans and they're season ticket holders. So okay. if they're listening to uh, this right now, maybe they'll be a little happier with me. But the people of Swift Current won't. You're going to lose one way or the other there. Uh, the other one, Saskatoon, uh, is, I think, going to move forward with that. I think this is the year for them. They've pushed all chips in. Um, it's going to be an interesting series. Uh, Red Deer's a real good team, coached yeah. by former uh, Pats assistant GM and head coach Dave Struge, who, of course, was is a former Saskatoon former blade Saskatoon himself, blade. When, about the era when you and I were younger. Yep. So uh, it's going to be a great series, but I see the Blades pushing through in that one, so we'll say Saskatoon and Moose Jaw. All right, so probably some of your buddies, if they're like, is Bidzy on the radio this afternoon? Did he just mention <laughs> Moose Jaw? Be like, what, what is he doing? <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Speaking, I got a random text from Moose Jaw today from my old All roommate. Right. He's like, what are you doing? I hear you. What are you doing? I hear you on the radio. I'm like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll explain after six tonight. I'll, I'll explain. Uh, it's Derek Bidwell, the newest addition to the Saskatchewan Rough Rider broadcast team, along with our new voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Dave Thomas, who we're going to chat with in moments with CFL legend and rider legend, Glenn Suter. It's the Sports Cage on 620 CKRM. <laughs> Four o'clock, good afternoon. It's mostly cloudy and it's nine degrees in Regina. I'm Corey Atkinson from the Harvard Media News Center with 620 CKRM News for Sherwood Co-op. From locally gr uh, grown fresh produce, condiments, and Western Canadian beef, your barbecue tastes better when you shop at Sherwood Co-op food stores. There is a new voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Hi, I'm Dave Thomas. Harvard Media, the parent company of this radio station, making the big announcement at a splashy event at Mosaic Stadium. Thomas is looking forward to the season getting started. Yeah, I'm humbled, I'm honored, I'm excited, I'm nervous all at the same time. This is something that every broadcaster dreams of getting an opportunity to do. 
The Rough Riders will be opening training camp next month with the first preseason game set for Monday, May 20th at Mosaic Stadium. Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe says he is willing to attend a televised meeting with his provincial counterparts and Justin Trudeau on the federal carbon levy. Moe says he believes it would give Saskatchewan a chance to highlight what the province is doing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. A conservative motion is being debated at the House of Commons calling for the sit-down. Trudeau's response has been that he met with the premiers in 2016 when the pan-Canadian framework on climate change was first established. Sask Barley is investing over $850,000 towards barley research. Research and Extension Manager with Sask Barley, Mitchell Jopp, says the research over the next five years will focus on a variety of areas. They are looking at uh, managing maturity and uniformity in barley, crop establishment, disease pressure, and marketability. The announcement adds to the 40 other current research projects funded by Sask Barley. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says information about potential Chinese interference in the nomination of a Liberal candidate in the 2019 election didn't meet the threshold to remove Han Dong as a candidate. Dong later left the Liberal caucus following media reports about allegations that he willingly participated in Chinese meddling and won his seat in 2019 with Beijing's help, which he denies. But in this case, I didn't feel that there was sufficient or sufficiently credible information that that would justify this um, very significant step as to um, remove a candidate. Trudeau testified today at a public inquiry on foreign meddling in the 2019 and 2021 elections. And there appears to be hope for the return of Kevin Costner for the final half season of Yellowstone. Yellowstone, one of the most popular shows on TV, returns later this year for the second half of its fifth and final season, and we thought star Kevin Costner wasn't going to be a part of it. He and show creator Taylor Sheridan apparently had creative and financial differences. But in his first public comments on the matter, Costner is opening the door to a return. I'd like to be able to do it, but we haven't been able to... I'm not sure how it's being worked out. He tells Entertainment Tonight he loved making the series. Maybe this will circle back to me. If it does, and I I feel really comfortable with it, I'd love to do it. Jason Nathanson, ABC News. Hollywood. It's 403, and that's your 620 CKRM News. Weather is next. April's Customer Appreciation Month at Mercedes Benz Regina. I'm Han Bo Lee, the general manager, and I personally invite you to experience the Mercedes Benz difference. When you're part of the Mercedes Benz family, we want you to drop by for a complimentary car wash, enjoy a coffee, and catch up with familiar faces at the dealership. As a thank you for choosing Mercedes Benz Regina, you get a flight for two to your favorite destination in Canada up to $1,000 in value with every new vehicle purchase. Visit Mercedes Benz Regina for Customer Appreciation Months. What color is my truck? Uh, camo. A little green with splashes of mud. Ah, I need a car wash and a fill-up. You need Sherwood Co-op gas bars. But I don't want to scuff my new sneaks. Sherwood Co-op is a full-service gas bar. They'll fill up your tank and add on a touchless car wash while you stay in your truck and... Keep my sneaks clean. You got it. Sherwood Co-op gas bars. We are members. We are owners. We are Sherwood Co-op. And now it's time for your 620 CKRM Precision Weather Forecast for Linex Regina. Serious protection, killer looks, 1865 McCarra Street, and Wolf Industries. Heavy truck repair in Grenfell, call 306-697-2213. A few clouds tonight with a low of minus 2. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and a high of 11. On Friday, a mix of cloud and sun and a high of 17. And on Saturday, partly sunny with a high of 19. At this hour in Moose Jaw, it's mostly cloudy. Winds are from the northwest at 39, gusting to 57, and it's 10 degrees. Regina is also mostly uh, cloudy. Winds are from the northwest at 43, gusting to 54, and it's 9 degrees. Get news and information anytime through the CKRM app or stream online at 620ckrm.com. When you get that big, bad trailer hooked up and out on the road, there's one thing a lot of drivers don't consider. The trailer floor. Lucky for you, there's Linex. Linex will give your trailer a spray that's tough as nails. No matter what kind of trailer you have. Sled trailer, quad trailer, side-by-side trailer. When you spray the wood floor, water dripping from the machine won't rot it, making it last a whole lot longer. They also do spray in truck bed liners and rocker panels. Spray the floor at Linex and make your trailer unstoppable. 1865 McCarra Street. Fat cat, you got your ears on? Just pulling the wiggle wagons off the big slab into Wolf Industries. Coming in loud and proud. Just grabbing some 100-mile coffee. Catch you on the flip-flop. 
Wolf Industries is the premium choice for your big rig. Stop in at their Grenfell location for all the parts and repairs you need. Copy that. Keep the shiny side up and get you on the flip-flop. Wolf Industries, the best for your truck. 10-4. Saskatchewan, it's time to talk sports. The all-new sports cage is on the air. Be part of the show. Call 936-6262 or toll-free 1-866-767-0620. And we're always online at sportscage.com. 620 CKRM. The All New Sports Cage is live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. I'm Chris Masrick, the director of sports for Harvard Media. As uh, it's a big day here for the All New Sports Cage on CKRM, we're streaming the show so you can watch what's happening from Mosaic at sportscage.com. With the announcement as Dave Thomas is the new voice of Ryder football. We just got this uh, on behalf of Brandy Ambrosi and the CFL. On behalf of Ryder Nation and the CFL fans everywhere, we're incredibly excited to welcome Dave to our CFL family. I'm excited to see CKRM 620's enhanced coverage of the team and league this season. I look forward to appearing on the show soon and chatting about the game we love. That's from the man that's running the CFL. That is awesome. Thank you to everybody that's been texting in this afternoon. We love the comments on social media. If you have something to say, text the all-new Sports Cage on the Capital Ford Lincoln text line. Capital Ford Lincoln, Saskatchewan's number one Ford retailer, 306-936-6262. Can I just say, I would like to thank, like there, it's a partnership, right? Like yes. teamwork, partnership are synonymous words in my, and there are so many great partners that I've, I've met fortunate enough to meet here this afternoon. I will come around and say hi to each and every one. Thank you so much for welcoming me. It's just been blowing my mind. It would be awesome to be like, all right, how many people have you met today and how many names can you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best and I'm fortunate when people hand me business cards. That's good. Um, so one of the things that we uh, decided to do because the the way I described it, Suits, am I, am I telling a 100% true story here that in my text message last week that by you asking Dave Thomas the tough questions, all the things Ryder Nation needs to know, it would be like the Pope knighting somebody <laughs> to welcome them to Ryder Nation. So Ryder legend Glenn, Glenn Suter, uh, who, who joins us for Quality Tire with nine locations across Saskatchewan, qualitytire.ca. Uh, suits, take it away. You can put Dave through the paces. I'm just going to sit back and listen here, if that's okay. <laughs> well, Chris, first of all, I, uh, I read that text to my wife, and she burst out laughing. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, hey, yeah, I, I'm real excited here about our new teammates. I want to congratulate, first of all, everybody. Dave, Justin, Derek, Barney, all joining the team. Now, I promised all of you guys that I'm not going to make you sing. Like, <laughs> Luke and I should probably make you sing a song. And, Dave, I'm not sure if, if you would like to go down that road or you would rather prefer not to go down that road. <laughs> oh, man, you have no idea. We want people to stick around here, so having me sing would not be <laughs> very conducive to that no hey listen i want to congratulate all of you and certainly dave uh new play-by-play -play man and i know you guys touched on it off the top but uh has is it starting to sink in probably won't till you you make you know you have that first call but is it starting to sink in this this is one of the top jobs in media in sports in our country and when I say that, and when you got the text, is it sinking in? What were the initial responses? I know you touched on it earlier, but how are you feeling about it? I'm right now. I'm absolutely privileged. I am probably one of the luckiest individuals on our planet right now to be able to sit here, talk with one of my heroes. Again, we've talked about this in the past before, Glenn. I, when I played high school football, I put on the 27 because you were my hero. And <laughs> I'm talking to you on the phone right now. I'm sitting in this amazing building and facility with a tremendous team that has surrounded me with so much support. I, I, I couldn't have dreamed of anything more if I wanted to. 
You know, Dave, you're like so many people know you in the province already, and I certainly have through Dogs Breakfast in Saskatoon and a lot of different events, hearing you call games and things like that. Um, but for those who haven't, um, give us a little bit of your resume just in when it comes to, you know, teams and leagues that you worked with, played. I know you coached, by the way, coach of the year in under-18 midget <laughs> hockey. Congratulations. Thank you very um, much. <laughs> but but to give, give those who maybe haven't heard you and aren't sure um, a little bit of, of your background in sports in the province. Well, I've been fortunate to call Saskatchewan home my entire life. And it started out with the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League. I then was able to work in the Western Hockey League. From there, I did a World Junior Hockey Championship. Then I was able to go ahead and follow my passion, which is football. So I got to work high school football games in the province. And again, there's not a lot of guys that can say that that was a real highlight, but that was truly a highlight for me. I worked junior football. I did a number of years with the University of Saskatchewan Huskies and the Canada West Football Showcase on television. So I'm extremely fortunate to have been able to do all of that in my career. And this is just the icing on the cake. Now, I remember also you had the, did you have the sideline gig in the 13th Cup? And doubles was on earlier. I heard that was outstanding to hear from Darian. I, I'm curious as to, I, I heard a story. It was a, a cool story about when Burris was having problems with handling the football. I don't care what team played the Saskatchewan Rough Riders that day. The Riders were winning that Grey Cup. Oh, I, I was fortunate enough to have that opportunity for three seasons to be a member of the broadcast team covering the visitors sidelines and yeah the pinnacle obviously was 2013 the great cup because there was a lot of people some of whom are in this room right now teammates of mine that uh, were able and fortunate enough to be able to get the local broadcast team out onto the field and covering the team and when Henry Burris fumbled that football I'll never forget it because your late colleague who was so kind to me growing up was uh, Chris Schultz. And Chris Schultz, yes. he, uh, he, he took me under his wing that game, right? He was the veteran, I was the rookie. And I remember him looking at me when Burris fumbled that football and he said, are your feet shaking? And I was like, yeah. He's like, this is so cool because it was that loud at Old Mosaic Stadium that you could feel it in your hands, the vibration from the fans cheering so loud. So let's, let's get down to it here. Um, who are some of the guys that you've admired growing up in the business that call games? Like, who have been some of your guys that you've sort of tried to, um, you know, work your style into? Well, there's, there's a lot, and, and I've been very fortunate enough to meet a number of them. Of course, your partner for a number of years, Chris Cuthbert, is absolutely sensational in the job that he does, and I've been so fortunate to be able to work alongside him and actually pick his brain a couple of times when he may or may not have had time for me but legends like Jeff Courier he was one of the fantastic rider voices that I grew up with and I just loved listening to him as he was so much larger than life and you go through the list of voices here in Saskatchewan and there's guys that I grew up watching on CTV like Dale Isaac and I, I was had a great conversation just moments ago talking about Dale Isaac I forgot that he had done television when it used to be CBC and CTV that broadcast the game so Dale Isaac was sensational and then uh, th more recently there's Mark Stevens and of course there's Knuckles I know that we want to don't want to talk about Winnipeg sometimes but boy I tell you just <laughs> listening to Bob Irving and his description of a football game was is just incredible Morley Scott over in Edmonton and I know there's only the thing that just isn't lost on me is that there's eight other people in this world that have the job of being a play-by-play -play guy in the CFL and joining that fraternity is amazing and again the talent that is there you can just learn something from everyone so that's a, that's quite a, a you know a, a broad stroke of, uh, of people there and and it's okay by the way it is definitely okay to respect the opponent okay so <laughs> you're allowed to say that, <laughs> that knuckles is good because I agree with you, he was excellent. Um, okay, so let's, let's go right into it. What will, what will Ryder fans hear when Dave Thomas calls a football game? One of the things that stuck out for me was years ago, somebody said that the difference with radio 
is that you can feel radio coming out of your speakers. So we can talk about the wind and how it's swirling or coming in off Lake Ontario at BMO Field. Or we can talk about the smell of that barbecue that you can smell from the concourse level in McMahon Stadium that's wafting in from outside in the tailgate. You can talk about the atmosphere and the chills and the feeling that you get when this team runs out onto the field here at Mosaic Stadium. You can feel that coming through the speakers where other mediums you don't always get that. And of course, I've got an opportunity and. I'm so fortunate to be granted the access to the team, to be able to be immersed in them, to be around them. These are professional people that have got lives and stories, and I'm so excited to be able to tell those and share those stories, which I think is something very unique that we get to do. I'm going to put you to work right now, and we're going to start talking some rider football, uh, get right into it. Um, let's let's start though. I know it's been a sad note for the entire province, but I think I'd be remiss in not mentioning uh, the passing of Jim Hobson and what he's meant to this organization. And just get your thoughts on that. You know what? Uh, when it comes to Mr. Hobson, it, it seems like everyone has a story, and he was just a fan of being a person, if that makes sense. And no matter what you were doing, and again at the time, I remember I was calling a. Saskatoon Hilltops game here at Mosaic Stadium against the Regina Thunder and he came up and hey Saskatoon guy what do you think of the digs and again he, he was just so kind to take time and he genuinely cared about you and that passion and what's the word I'm looking for the, the passion and the ability to inspire people is truly unique and I believe that Mr. Hobson had that and it's qualities that we all want to have and he definitely displayed that and again it, it's a legacy that in my mind is unmatched yeah we he will never be forgotten and we'll honor him this coming season for sure um just saw him uh, back in the past season at a function in saskatchewan and and i i couldn't believe just his great courage in the battle he was going through so again our thoughts are with his family uh but let's let's talk about the team because I know you're going to have Corey on and you're going to talk to uh, some of the guys involved in the riders right now and, you know, in this show. So what do you think of their offseason? Let's get into some football talk. You know, I love what they have done with the offensive line. And Coach Mace, I had an opportunity to attend a luncheon with him yesterday. And one of the points that he made, of course, we all cannot wait to see A.J. Ouellette run over Adam Big Hill. But in the meantime, <laughs> he is such a big part of your blocking scheme, and to be able to bring that in is going to be gigantic. And if you extrapolate, I don't know if, it's, if you can truly do it or not, but if you extrapolate Trevor Harris's numbers over five games, and you put that into the course of an 18-game season, he would have been number two in passing yardage in the CFL last year. So if you can protect him, which, again, some of the free agent signings up front on the offensive line, and of course with A.J. Ouellette, like I mentioned, adding another dimension of pass protection, to me, you've solved a big problem there, and then you look at some of the great receivers you've got that he can throw the football to. This is going to be an exciting offense that is going to be led by Mark Mueller that I know will not disappoint anyone. Well, Dave, you know, when you're, when you're my teammate, I'm sure you know this already in our time talking together up in Saskatoon and things, uh, you know that when we talk football that I will try to get to talking about the Canadian side of Canadian football. And that's one of the things I think is most impressive about this Ryder team. I, you know, some of the acquisitions on the O-line and then that Canadian receiving core you touched on with Sam Emlis signing a contract extension, that looks really good to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Samuel is, to me, what a breakout season he had last year. And having an opportunity, as you know, Glenn, being in Saskatoon, I had an opportunity to watch training camp. And just watching the way that he prepared and carried himself throughout camp last season was absolutely phenomenal. And it wasn't a huge shock that he had that big step forward. But what about Jackson Ford? Like, who can forget mm -hmm. Labor Day and that block pass that Jackson Ford had coming out in seemingly nowhere from my vantage point? And you're only as good as your Canadians, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders do a great job of going ahead and supporting the grassroots of football, which brings up that next layer of Canadian talent. So, to me, we're in good hands, I think. Yeah, no, no question about it. And let's talk about the league. I mean, when you, when you look across the league, I, 
I, I know Justin is probably going to agree with this and reading a lot of the articles with Three Down Nation always, and thank goodness they're keeping us informed throughout the off seasons as well as they do. But um, just just to, when I look at the league in general and how many sort of positive announcements have been made, the game in Vancouver Island, I, you know, I really feel like we're in a, you know, the, the, we're trending up when it comes to the success, both financially, on and off the field for Canadian football after getting through that pandemic and beyond. No, I, would, I couldn't agree more, and you can see it at the grassroots level. I do want to give a quick shout-out to the football SASC team. I, I know that they do a terrific job of administering the sport that is growing in leaps and bounds in our province. So uh, kudos to them and, and their entire team. I'm going to talk about Mike and talk about Jeff, but that's where it starts. And I had an opportunity to go visit uh, the Vancouver, uh, the Vancouver Island Raiders a number of years ago. And the number of young, I, I always equate to the success being how many youngsters have a football and are throwing it around the field before and after the game. And the love of the sport just continues to grow. And the stadiums that I've been fortunate enough to be at you're starting to see that resurgence. The next generation starting to come in. They're learning what the party is. They're learning where the fun is. And again, you just can't experience anything better than live sport. And of course, if you can't be there, we're proud to be here for you, uh, bringing you all the action. But uh, again, to me, this the sport continues to grow. And that is a fun, fun thing to be part of. Yeah, I can't, can't wait to see when uh, we watch the Olympics flag football in the Olympics for the first time and how that will influence in a positive way amateur football in our country. Oh, absolutely. And I actually have my flag football coach certification. That doesn't mean I'm any good. That just means that I attended the course. <laughs> but seeing the enthusiasm from the youngsters at a real young age and when you're running like a double reverse or you've got a triple fly or you're trying to explain to an eight-year-old what the zone defense is and Trust me, when I was in grade 12, I still didn't know, and I was starting for two years at that point. So I think that the, the flag game is such a great introduction to football. And now the next layer, of course, as you talk about going to the Olympics and the competitive programs that there are across the country for flag football, it's pretty impressive. So let's, let's quickly touch on one thing. You've got you to gotta watch out for your color analyst now. I'm just <laughs> saying, because, no, well, Luke Mullender can predict place like he he can tell you before it happens that it's going to happen i don't know if you've heard that call but he he nailed it a couple of times yes absolutely i am so thrilled to have the privilege to work with luke and again i was such a huge fan of his when he was playing the game and then he became a broadcaster and now i'm an even bigger fan because of the way that he sees the game he sees the game he understands the game just like you do glenn the way I wish that I could have experienced, the way that I could see what you're doing, I don't have that opportunity, I don't have that background and expertise, but you guys being willing to share your stories, your insights, and the reason why. I can tell you what happened, but he can tell you exactly why it happened and spot things that I would never have imagined being that intricate of detail. That's what I'm really excited about, and man, Luke's passion and excitement are second to none. Yeah, he's outstanding. I I can't wait to uh, put this whole thing together and we're going to start very soon. It's going to happen quickly. And, and Chris, I promise that I won't make them sing on the air, <laughs> but I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk to Luke, but I, I really think that, you know, when the rookies come on, even if they had played on another team in previous years, well, the rookies come on and, and I'm, I don't know what Justin's pipes are like either, but maybe we need to see if, if he can sing one, Chris. <laughs> well, congratulations, I don't know if... Dave. I really appreciate it, man. You're, you're outstanding. Thank you so much, Glenn. Uh, Glenn Suter joining us this afternoon here on the all new Sports Cage, of course, on the Capital Ford Lincoln text line. Uh, we thank you for all the responses that are coming in. And of course, Glenn joining us here this afternoon on the Western Pizza Guest Hotline. Perfect pizza with a generous amount of toppings, plus Greek food like souvlaki, ribs, salads, all the goodness you can't make at home. Call Western Pizza today. The Sports Cage will continue. We are streaming online at sportscage.com and, of course, live on your radios here on 620 CKRM. 
620 CKRM is your home to country's greatest hits and the 90s at 9. One full hour featuring the biggest hits of the 90s. Garth, Reba, Alan, Shania, George, and so much more. No cassette tape or CDs required. And 90s mullets are optional. 90s at 9. For the town of Wolseley and the voice of Saskatchewan. 620 CKRM. Try Hall Bale Movers, one man, one loader. The Try Hall self unloading bale mover hauls and unloads three rows at a time in under a minute, holds up to 18 round bales, uses no hydraulics or winches, and mounts on any flat deck or truck chassis. You can move bales by yourself, but you need to act now. Put your deposit down to get one this season. Visit tryhallbalemovers.com for information and to see the bale mover in action. That's tryhallbalemovers.com. Say, what happened to the picture? I'll show you what happened to the picture. Uh, Shut up! Hey, Curly, go get the tools. Certainly. Wait a minute. How come I have to get the tools? Because I said so. Oh, yeah? Shut up, the two of you. <gasps> we'll just call Glasses TV, your Sastel authorized dealer. They have tons to offer, like Sastel wireless internet. Not as wireless as you, eh, Mo? Oh, a wise guy. Hey, what did I do? Contact Glasses TV, your Sastel authorized dealer in Musiman today. Get it hot and get it fast. Western pizza. Some will try to tell you eight inches is enough. Others will say 10 inches will do. But when you want a lot of pizza, you got to hanker down with a delicious 13 inch pepperoni from Western Pizza. Why mess with a good thing? You know what you want. 13 inches of pepperoni pizza perfection from Western Pizza. Western Pizza. Big on toppings, big on taste. Dine in or take out. Order today. And get it hot and get it fast. Western Pizza. Bidding is now open for the timed online farm equipment auction for Walter Farms just east of Lentman, Saskatchewan. Register to bid at MacAuctionCompany.com. Up for auction, four John Deere 9770 combines, a 2013 Cat Challenger four-wheel drive tractor, a 2020 Sunflower 38-foot disc, a ton of livestock equipment including round and square balers, manure spreaders, and creep feeders. Bidding closes this Thursday, April 11th at 10 a.m. Get your tickets now for the Canadian Mental Health Association Chase the Ace. The next draw is tomorrow at 2.30. Tickets are only $10 for your chance to win the weekly prize, and if you draw the Ace of Spades, you'll also win the grand prize jackpot. Get your tickets at sk.cmha.ca. That's sk.cmha.ca for your chance to win some cash. Chase the Ace with CMHA Saskatchewan. Get your $10 ticket at sk.cmha.ca. Do you have dirty, grimy, smelly bins? Are you disgusted by the flies and maggots? Are you worried about the spread of bacteria and disease? Ew, it's on my shoe. Are you embarrassed about your dirty bin's appearance? Look away, I'm hideous. Are you frustrated with the lack of cleaning equipment? Uh... Let Bin Spa do the dirty work for you. They provide mobile residential and commercial bin cleaning and pressure washing services. Just schedule a visit. Leave your bin on the street and Bin Spa will clean it right there. Keep your bins clean. Binspa.ca Forgot your lunch? You can support some of Regina's best locally owned restaurants. We want our listeners to experience the variety of menus from local favorites like Lakeshore Restaurant, Famoso Pizzeria Eastgate, Tommy Speak Eatery, Schmitty Smoked Meats and Catering, Bar Willow Eatery, and Houston Pizza. We're giving away a $50 gift card every Friday to one of these featured restaurants. Visit these Harvard approved lunch spots today and savor the best of local cuisine. Don't wait. Indulge in a culinary adventure right in your neighborhood. This week's restaurant is Houston Pizza. Keep listening to win. Real Marine has been on the water with you for more than 38 years, 35 with Mercury and 21 with Princecraft. They're proud of their long history serving the parkland and area and sharing their ability, knowledge, and schooling. Mercury and Princecraft are number one on the water, and Real Marine is number one at keeping you there. New boat inventory has arrived at realmarine.com, but stock is limited, so purchase yours today before they're gone. Princecraft and Real Marine, the perfect partners for living your passion to the fullest. Real Marine, Highway 16 West, Foam Lake, 306-272-3850. The all-new sports cage. Tax 306 936 6262. 620 CKRM. We're live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. I'm Chris Masrick. It's the all-new sports cage on 620 CKRM, and you can watch the stream at sportscage.com. That's our brand new website. 
Uh, the Sports Cage is brought to you by Bronco Plumbing and Heating, where professional service is guaranteed. They'll treat you right, 781-2090. Glenn Suter, rider legend, CFL legend, TSN color man is on with us, along with new voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Dave Thomas. Uh, stick around, by the way. We will have Jeremy O'Day and Corey Mace, Dave Thomas and Justin Dunk right after the 5 o'clock news. A chance to sit down. Uh, suits, uh, we're going to get, uh, we, we brought Wes up here because it's almost training camp time. Um, suits, I don't know how you felt about training camp. As you got older, does it suck? Because Wes, you said it sucked <laughs> as you get older, right? Yeah, hey, what's up, Suits? Yeah, for sure. It sucks. It's definitely as you get older, right? When you're young, you're nervous and you, you're just expending more energy because you're trying to impress. And then when you're older, you know everything. It's like a grind just to get up and get there. <laughs> but then you got to come show up because you don't want these young dudes to make you look bad. So you got to, you know, you got to extend, put your effort out there, too. So it's just, you know, a long grind for a couple of weeks of a lot of stuff that you should know already. Right. So just just repetitive. Suits, did you feel yeah, the same yeah, way? Wes, Wes, by the way, you don't have to sing. So you're good there. <laughs> oh, yeah. That rookie year, right? <laughs> yeah. The rook, only the rookies have to sing. Yeah, hey, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I feel the same way. You know, I, I made my first training camp much rougher than it had to be because I chose to pick a fight with Ray Elgard to try and get noticed by the, the coaches. And that was a very quick fight with him hitting me and me hitting the ground. But I, <laughs> I, uh, I was like an old lineman at receiver, man. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. You're right, Wes. And you know what? I, but, you know, when we, when we figured out the bike situation at Saskatoon, when we could bike to and from practice, that helped a little bit. And, and remember, I mean, I don't know when, Wes, when you were talking, like when you were in camp, how many weeks were you guys in camp? Because for us, it was a month with four preseason games, and then one inner squad game with Winnipeg. Oh, um, and I think they, sh well, they shortened them down at your time, I'm sure, but they're yeah, way definitely. shorter now. Uh, it was it definitely, I mean, it was two weeks at most. I feel like it was like 12 to 13 days, but that seemed like forever. So a month? A oh, month God. of training camp. If you're a young uh, guy, how do you make an impression in 12 days? Yeah, well, that's the thing. You, it's tough, right? You get out there and uh, you got to make a couple of big plays. You got to make a splash. And, and, and like Suits did, you got to challenge some of the vets so people start paying attention to you, really. That's, that's the best way to do it. You got to get it worked but, out. But how do you do that as a running back? Like, yeah. like Suter Elgard, I can see that receiver, mm -hmm. safety, DB. Like, how do you run out of your pattern to go run over some DB when yeah. you're like, no, it's a running play, Wes. What are you doing? You're well, 15 I mean, yards down the field. The CFL is an interesting game because you got to be able to show the, the skills to get out of the backfield, catch the ball a little bit, but you also have to be tough. And, you know, there's going to be some linebackers and some blitzes that you're going to have to pick up. So you buckle up the chin strap. And uh, that's a, really, that's how I really uh, got my spot as a rookie. I ended up just trying to lay the wood on everybody that I had to hit. And I was like hitting the linemen, linebackers. It didn't no matter who it was. I was just, you know, playing hard and aggressive. And uh, actually, I signed to the practice roster. It technically didn't even make the team. This is all with the stamps. But uh, stuck around and a couple guys got injured and here I am. <laughs> what was the practice roster pay back then? Uh, it was 500 a week, but, but, but you but. didn't have to pay for your living. Like, you, okay. so they, so I don't think they fed us, but they did put us up. So, you know, it really didn't go too far, but it, but it, it, you could feed yourself and, and you had a place to lay your head. So it worked out, I guess. So, you know, I didn't have anything else going on at home. I was like, eh, 500, that'll work for a, a month or so. And then I didn't have to <laughs> worry about it because I made the roster. So <laughs> suits, you picked a fight with Elgard. So at what point did you know, hey, I, I made the team. I'm now going to be his teammate. It was probably preseason game three in Vancouver um, when I, I was in a fight at the line of scrimmage on the punt team with Jan Carinci. I don't know if you remember that name. Oh, I remember that name. But, yeah, Carinci was a receiver for the Lions, a veteran guy, and he jacked me at the line of scrimmage on a punt cover team and my helmet flew off because we started swinging. And then I covered the punt without a helmet. Back then you could. And later, I can't remember if I got in on the tackle. I think I was close. I sort of dove for him. But I was there without my helmet. And I remember 
Ruben Barry in the team meeting afterwards saying, uh, stopping that play, because we replayed it back, and he said, guys, if we have 45 guys on our roster that play like that, we'll be, we'll be just fine. And I thought, I looked, in fact, I looked at, I can't remember, I th- it, w- it might have been Elgard. And I turned to Elgard at that moment and said, I think I just made the team. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There you go. You? You know, you know when you were safe? At, at what point? When I was safe, uh... As a, I wasn't safe. I you told you I got yeah, cut. They put me on yeah, the practice okay. roster. But no, I think uh, I knew I was doing well enough to stick around. I think, I think I kind of knew when uh, a D lineman, um, he basically came to me and he was like, "I told everybody on the defense to watch out for you because I, because, because uh, I'm trying to think of his name right now. But anyway, he was a, a vet at the time, and I, I had to like, you know, crack back on him or, you know, kick him out or something. And I came and I, and I gave him a good shot. And he was like, I told everybody on the defense to watch out for you because you came to play for real. You're trying to make the squad. So I think just getting that respect from a vet kind of helped the, the buzz kind of flow around the team for me, right? And, and, and kept, had some coaches keeping their eye on me. So you've seen Rider Nation. You've seen it at its best. You've seen it at its worst. And as we're heading into a brand new era, there's a whole bunch of things. Dave Thomas being the new play-by-play voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, as we announced earlier today. If you're just joining us on the all-new Sports Cage on 620 CKRM, it's Chris Mazurk here, Dave Thomas, Wes Cates, Glenn Suter is on the phone. We're also streaming the show today. You can watch the stream, sportscage.com. We're at Studio 620. And if you want to text us, it's the Capital Ford Lincoln text line, Capital Ford Lincoln, Saskatchewan's number one Ford retailer, 306-936-6262. So you've been around the good, you've been around the bad, we're entering into this new era. It's funny with football, you don't stay on top forever. You have to reinvent yourself. But even when you were playing, you guys had to reinvent yourself, sometimes week to, obviously every year, but sometimes yeah. week to week just to get yourself out of a funk that you're in. Well, yeah, we definitely had a, we had different coaches rolling in, right? Uh, you know, we had Ken Austin and then Ken Miller, and then, you know, we had, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> what a few different coaches. What, roll, a, what a contrast. Through in a few years, but we, we stayed competitive until, until that last year. We had a little trouble in my last year in 11. We, uh, I think we only won six games. So yeah, there's always that, those highs and lows, but I was in three great cups and won one, right? And you, you just look back at perspective, and it, it, it's a lot about um, just the team gelling. You know, guys kind of understanding that it's not about you, and to just come to work every day trying to trying to make yourself better to 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 enhance the success of the team. So I think um, you know, I, I feel like right now you're looking at a, a team that you know was led by Craig Dickinson. That when he first got here, they had the most wins in one season that the Riders have ever had. Yeah. And then it kind of fell off and, and, you know, guys didn't really gel. And uh, you had one of the worst seasons you've seen out of the Riders. And I think the buzz around uh, just the change and, and Corey Mason, him being an ex-player and uh, just coming with that, that respect. And, and, you know, it's, it's hard for a coach to come in and win over a locker room unless they know you've done it. And so he's kind of already won over the locker room without having to prove himself. And I think that's going to go a long way because he seems like a great guy to play for. And, uh, yeah, they're, and they're building a great team around him. So, so here are Suits. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance to think of this. Okay, because he had mentioned Ryder legend Ken Austin. A funny Ken Austin story from both of you because he was your coach, but Suits, you would know you would know him on a whole different level before he was Ken Austin. So, Wes, is there anything that comes to mind when Ken Austin is the coach that you can share? Like funny, fire, just... fiery, funny, kicking garbage cans, freaking out because he's 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 not a calm individual. But we love that man. about him in Rider Nation. <laughs> right. I we just remember, that. I just remember he could he could do no wrong, man. He would come into the room and he would be able to just rile up the guys that need to be riled up, or you know, say the right thing to guys. But I, the thing that stuck out to me the most with Ken Austin is because he would bounce around to all the meeting rooms, right? He would come into the offensive room, obviously, because he's a QB and offensive guy. And he would just be like, okay, he would draw up something on the board. He's like, remember we ran this play a couple weeks ago, blah, 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 and we, we scored, we ran this dig or whatever. He's like, we're going to change that dig into a post. And watch, we're going to score on it because this safety loves to jump digs. I kid you not, he was probably like, 90% calling the plays that we were going to score on. And he would, he would have like one or two of those wrinkles every week. And sure enough, 
they would work. I'm like, this dude, man, he's a real black. <laughs> you know, he's a savant. I don't know what the heck this is. <laughs> uh, suits a good uh, Ken Austin story that you can share. Well, first of all, first of all, I'll give you I'll give you two things that I used to bug Kent about because Kent had what we called in the locker room a bit of a bird chest. It wasn't. <laughs> it, it it was. Every time I walked by Kent, I would say to him, you know, the weight room is right over there. If you want me to show you where it is, I'll walk you over there. And because he was never in it, but I'll tell you what, uh, Wes is bang on with regards to his knowledge of the game, his speed and release, his processing speed when he was looking at a defense and in that split second knew exactly where to go with the football. In the 89 Grey Cup, there was there was a time there where he he might have been pulled and he went to coach Gregory at that time and said don't you dare and that's when he hit Fairholm uh, oh. over the top for a big touchdown and you know without Kent that team doesn't have a ring um, so he was that kind of guy but I'll, I'll tell you one quick story we were in the bus in the Labor Day rematch I was sitting beside Bobby Jerson and we just got it handed to us. 56-3, I believe, was the final score. Rob Benstone wouldn't know exactly what it was, but it felt like something like that. And uh, we weren't happy. We were sitting in the bus, and Kent Austin walked on, and he goes, where's the stats? Anyone got the stats? How many yards did I throw for today? <laughs> and I, I, had to, I had to block Bobby Jurison from just... <laughs> attacking Kent Austin somehow and I needed help from all my friends and I joke though because because Kent uh, is a tremendous leader he was a great coach of the football team too champion there and uh, you know just a great teammate he was the first guy when you were sick Kent Austin was the first guy with his wife to bring you soup um, you know and just come by and say do you need anything he, he was that guy it's the all-new Sports Cage on 620 CKRM. You just mentioned him, rider legend Jeff Fairholm. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to get uh, former number 18 on the radio with a suit, so stick around. Uh, you can chat with one of your old teammates. It's uh, the Sports Cage from Studio 620, live at Mosaic Stadium, where we're also live streaming on our all-new website, sportscage.com. We'll be right back after this. Summers in Saskatchewan can get toasty. Make sure you're ready with a new Bryant air conditioner from Bronco Plumbing and Heating. When Bronco installs your new Bryant air conditioner, they'll only send qualified, courteous, professional tradespeople who will do the job right, including the cleanup. Keep your home comfortable by only using the best. Bronco Plumbing and Heating and Bryant. Whatever it takes. Call 781-2090 today. Bronco will treat you right. And that's a promise. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before seating? Give yourself the upper hand with the all-new Strawmaster X Disc Harrow. The Strawmaster X with Disc On Command technology gives you the ability to cover large acres at high speeds in a large working width. Built off the impressive Strawmaster Plus frame, the design allows for more tillage than a traditional heavy harrow, but less aggressive than a high-speed disc. Visit Dagelman.com and Red vs. Egg and Supply. Dagelman. Engineered tough. Since 1949, Nelson Homes has been providing you one-stop shopping for ready-to-move homes, panelized packages, and on-site builds. Nelson Homes' team of authorized dealers all over Saskatchewan would be happy to help you turn your dream home into a reality. In the Strasburg, Last Mountain Lake area, call Dean at SolidWorks Carpentry. Or call 1-800-661-6534 for more information. Nelson Homes, trusted quality and service since 1949. April is Customer Appreciation Month at Capital GMC Buick Cadillac. I'm Jay Paul, General Manager, and this month we're celebrating with employee pricing on all new vehicles. Plus, Costco discounts are back. Eligible Costco members get an additional discount on select models. And check out our huge certified pre-owned inventory. Oh, and this month only, when you buy a vehicle from us, you get a trip for two to Las Vegas. Celebrate Customer Appreciation Month with us at Capital GMC. Discombobulated. What a weird word. It sounds like my buddy Bob blew up. This friend will discombobulate. Kaboom. Goodbye, Bob. Anyway, Bob knew all about the right tires for the season. See your local Cooper tire dealer about yours. 
They carry the Cooper Discoverer Rugged Trek all-season tires designed to provide excellent on-road traction and a comfortable ride. Your local Cooper Tire dealer. When it comes to tires, they've got you covered. Now, somebody help me clean up Bob. Milligan Bio, a locally owned Saskatchewan company based in Foam Lake, is the leading buyer of heated and damaged canola in Saskatchewan, and they want to buy your seed now. Milligan Bio is paying a premium for damaged canola and is accepting immediate delivery. Even if you've been turned away somewhere else, Milligan Bio will take your canola today. On-farm pickup available. Visit MilliganBio.com or call 272-6284. That's 272-6284. Power meet affordability. Kubota's L-Series tractors are built for those who do. The perfect blend of performance and versatility for just $195 bi-weekly for 84 months, including loader. See your Kubota dealer for details. The all-new sports cage. Be part of the show. Call 936-6262 or toll free 1-866-767-0620. 620 CKRM. We're live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. I'm Chris Masrick along with uh, Dave Thomas, Jeff Blairholm, and Glenn Suter. It's the all-new Sports Cage, and we're streaming the show. You can watch the action at sportscage.com. So we were just talking about Ken Austin's stories with Wes Gates, and Glenn Suter shared one. And then Fairholm, we got him on stage. He put on the headset uh, suits. He would like to dispute uh, your Kent, the great guy. So, okay, so no, what did, I'm not saying No, he's not, we're not saying he's a great guy, but you did. He yelled at you? When and where did this oh. happen? Oh, man, it was right on the field. It was at Taylor Field, and I ran a route and I made an adjustment, and uh, Kent said, you ran the wrong route, and he was literally yelling at me as we were walking off the field. He had his helmet off, and he's yelling at me, and he caught it on TV. And I was like, I just stayed quiet. I didn't say anything. And then uh, after the game, I, uh, not the next day, we went and watched film, and I happened to be right. So I, I had a good chance to go and talk to Kent about that and say, don't ever do that on, on national television again. <laughs> national television. <laughs> I, Jeff, I want to know. So 89, right, we're all thinking Kent Austin, Tom Burgess, right? That's, that's what the fans do, right? I, I wasn't kidding when I said that the backup quarterback's our favorite. And, of course, the quarterbacks have got to deal with that. What about the receivers? Like, because... Obviously, it affects who's throwing the ball to you. It does. But in that case, you know, we had two number ones, really, 1A and 1B. Because, you know, you have to remember in the Western final, <clears throat> Tommy came in and, and won the game for us, right? Mm-hmm. So it was, it was a, bit of a bit of a quarterback controversy on who was going to start, you know, externally. Who was going to start yeah. in the Grey Cup? We all knew it was going to be Kent. But, um, but when you have 1A and 1B, it doesn't really matter. But most of the time, the backup quarterback is, you know, the, the best leg player on the team, as you mentioned earlier today, and it's but it's it's tough because usually they're not nearly as good as that starter, and you get a little worried that they're going to throw you into a guy like Suter who's trying to pick you off in the middle, you know. So yeah, <laughs> um, let's go. That, so that, okay, the, the the 89 season, we all know how it ends, winning the Grey Cup. Honestly, when you guys went to Edmonton, I know I didn't. I'm, I'm a diehard rider. I, I didn't have a lot of faith that you guys were going to win that game. I don't know if you guys thought the same way, but it just seemed improbable that that was going to happen. Don't tell, you can't tell me. You're like, no, nah, it was a lock all the way. We knew we had him. We had him. No, we didn't know it was a lock. There's no way. But, you know, we, we certainly didn't go in there thinking that we were going to lose. We went in there thinking we had every right to be there and had every chance to, to beat them if we played well. And we were peaking, right? You have to remember, we went through a lot of bad stuff that year, <laughs> and we were only 9-9, nine and nine, but we knew we were good. And we were just coming in and just tar- starting to peak. And, you know, to add to your feelings of not being great chances of winning, you know, we, we lost to Edmonton in that final, in our final regular season game in Edmonton, pretty bad, too. But we felt like we were good, and we just thought that if we could put it all together just, you know, for one game, especially after we beat Calgary the way we did and all, had all those injuries, that, you know, we could do it, and we believed it. We had a type of team that was close, and we could talk about it and, uh, and really get closer together that way. How has the receiving position changed in your mind over the years? Because, the, again, everything evolves. What's been the biggest evolution? I think the players are, are better. They're, they're in better shape these days. You know, I mean, we were in good shape. It's not like when my dad was playing. He used to say they'd go to training camp to get in shape. They, but the players <laughs> these days are, man, they're just in such great shape. And they're, they're faster, they're bigger, they're stronger. 
Um, I think that what's the position hasn't changed that much. I think the defenses are doing more. They're doing, you know, a lot more match coverage. And I, you know, I've been I've been on the air here saying we need someone to blow the coverage off, blow the coverage off. Well, I'm starting to watch defenses more, and the defenses have evolved. So I don't think it's so much the receivers. Um, they're still just as fast. They're still catching the football. Um, but they, you know, I think the defenses are making them change their offenses a bit. Plus, but, none of them wear glass cutter gloves anymore. Like that's not, a darn shame if there was ever one. It's a glass. So, um, but suits, you got to feel bad for these defensive guys because they've changed all the rules. Because in the old days, the Fairholmes and the Elgards and a lot of those receivers and the Dave Sapunjas used to take a beating from the defenses, and they just you can't do that anymore. Like you can't you can't tackle like you used to. You can't hit in football anymore. That's got to be tough as a defensive well, guy. Yeah. Uh, I hear you. I mean, the, the the big hits, the big, you know, leaving your feet and 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 catapulting yourself into a receiver. Those days are are gone, and and it's and it's better that they are. But there's still good physicality in the game, and I would agree with Jeff that you know the the athlete is training 24/7. I mean, a lot of guys did back then too, but it it's just it's just different now. What we know about nutrition and different ways to train and you know core techniques and all these things are are just producing just tremendous skilled athletes. We talked about a couple of them. Um, and by the way, there was no one in the league back in the 80s and early 90s that could blow the top off of coverage like Jeff Fairholm. So oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you right now, and, and, and I guarantee you that there were defensive backs across this country looking at him on film going, I, I don't know. Like, I think I could just lock him down and press, and then he would just take off and run right by him like he did in the, in the Grey Cup. But, uh, oh, and believe me, one other little side note, guys. Uh, I had my disagreements with Kent Austin many a time. <laughs> okay. Now the truth has started. Coming out, of, coming out of rules committee meetings when I was not happy with the narratives or his argument. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's funny uh, when Wes Cates mentioned Ken Austin, the coach, which, and then Ken Miller. What a, probably a 180 of probably style, all successful in their own ways to uh, you know, w where we are today. Um, in your time, Jeff, favorite coach you had as a rider? Who would, who would have been the, like a guy that you're like, yeah, no, he was good. You can also name the, the worst coach you ever had too. Trust me, I it doesn't matter. They're, they're probably not following us on the, <laughs> on the social channels and they probably won't DM us to be yeah, like, probably not. Why are you talking smack? It's it, been 40 years. You know, I had so many coaches. Uh, <laughs> I did. I had, I think I had my first eight years of college and pro i had a different offensive coordinator every year wow and it was <clears throat> made me smarter i guess because i had to figure everything out because everything changed but i think as a head coach yeah. uh, i had you know i'll go with john gregory because he gave me a chance yeah um and then uh and, and just the coaches always seemed to work well with me at the stage of my life and my career um like don matthews i had a chance to play for don twice and, you know, the different stages of my career. And he was great because he just really took it easy on you. You know, he didn't beat you up in practice. And that's, I needed that, you know, later stages of my career. Um, but, yeah, I had different offensive coordinators. And it's just, you know, it's hard to pick one. But I would say head coaches, I'd have to go with John and Don. Nice. Suits, you, faves, or worse? Well, yeah, I mean, well, no, Don, Don Matthews and John Gregory as, as pros. I know the, the fan base at times were, were on me for a couple of missed tackles, and I still apologize for <laughs> The fan base? Right? No. But, no. But suits, when Don, suits when Don they're, they're, Matthews, they're on you if another team scores a touchdown now and you don't call it the right way. Social media blows up. <laughs> yeah. And you're being a homer for the other team and not the riders, okay? Exactly, exactly. But, you know, Don Matthews in my first meeting with him came in and said, hey, you're my safety. And that was, uh, you know, a sort of back in me in a big way. And I, I wanted to go to war for him. So I would have to say him. But I, I'm going to, and I hope that there's high school coaches and amateur football coaches listening right now, because I'm going to name Earl Henderson, my high school coach, as one of the most positive, influential guys in my life, not just in football and on the field, but to know how to treat people. He taught me how to lead a group. I played quarterback in high school, so that was by position. I was this sort of 
you know, you had to take that role on and, and Earl Henderson. So if you're a high school coach, you are making an impact on the young people you're working with. Yeah, I'm going to jump on that. I didn't know we could go to high school, but I totally <laughs> agree with you, uh, uh, Suits. It was, my guy was Dave Singer and in high school, and he became, uh, he's still a great friend of mine. I wished him happy birthday a couple of days ago. Um, and they, it's amazing the effect that these coaches have on lives. Uh, I was a, 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 not a high school coach, but I coached my son in football, and I remember you know, Dave doing those special things and all those life lessons, and I really tried hard to do that with the kids that I was coaching as well. So, yeah, 100%. Those, all, you, all you coaches that are, that are out there coaching hockey, football, whatever, not only are you giving back to the community, but you're, you're seriously affecting the lives of you're, kids. You're probably doing way more than you'll ever think, or you will never get credit for until maybe years later. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a break uh, and then come back after 5 o'clock. Dave Thomas and Justin Dunk will chat with Corey Mace and Jeremy O'Dea, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. It's the all-new Sports Cage. We're live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. We are streaming at sportsstage.com, and we're on the radio at 620 CKRM. Country Gold with Terry Clark. I'm Terry Clark, and I hope you'll join me this week for Country Gold. We'll play lots of your favorite country hits from the 80s and 90s, and I'll share my own personal experiences from 20 years of touring. I'll also have superstar guests each week who will tell you what's going on in their world. Plus, we'll take your calls and requests. So join me this week for Country Gold with Terry Clark. Country Gold is brought to you by Trent Dickin and his experienced team at Flooring Superstore. Join Terry Clark Saturday mornings at 6 or Sunday afternoons at 4 on The Voice of Saskatchewan, 620 CKRM. Uh, dear, it's time to replace your tires. Your performance tires? What? I don't need performance tires. That's some macho thing. Well, actually, you have them now. I do? Yeah, that's what makes your car feel so safe. Safe? Well, I do like the way my car drives. Right? You want them to turn and stop when needed, and Toyo produces performance tires that improve your vehicle's ride. Toyo Tires, huh? Let's do it. Toyo Tires, available at all nine quality tire locations in Saskatchewan. We all believe in the possibilities of tomorrow. And at Easy Financial, we're here to help you every step of the way. If the banks aren't an option, we can help get you approved for a loan in as little as 10 minutes. And with our personal home equity and auto loans, you can choose the loan that's right for you. So you can start rebuilding your credit for a better tomorrow. Plus, get a new loan and pay no interest on the last six months, April 15th to 20th only. Apply today without affecting your credit score at easyfinancial.com or at over 400 locations. Conditions apply. Hun, I'm starving. What do we have to eat? Avoid the annoyed. Western pizza. I really don't feel like cooking today. Avoid the annoyed. Western pizza. I want lasagna. I was thinking Caesar salad and garlic bread. Mmm, I had my heart set on chicken wings. Avoid the annoyed. Western pizza. Avoid the annoyed with Western pizza. Big on toppings, big on taste. Dine in or take out. Order today. Western Pizza. When a patient is in need, it's never too far. It's the fourth annual Critical Care on the Air Radiothon for Star Saskatchewan. Stars will be there for the next patient in need, but we can't do it without your help. The Critical Care on the Air Radiothon will be presented today by BHP. To donate, visit criticalcareontheair.ca or call the Viterra Lifeline at 1-877-50-STARS. All funds raised stay in Saskatchewan to help STARS' mission to provide critical care anywhere. Truck Month is on now at GMC. Right now, get a 2024 Sierra 1500 Elevation at 0% financing for up to 60 months. Whether you're a weekend warrior or an everyday explorer, with Sierra's up to 13 camera views and standard GMC Pro Safety Assist, including automatic emergency braking, you can get out there and explore your wild side. Nope, too wild. See your GMC dealer for more details. Saskatchewan loves Metal Man. From the backyard to Main Street to your local park, Metal Man creates customizable metal products. Benches, fire pits, signs, pathway lights for walking trails. Expertly crafted and dark sky compliant. Metal Man is a trusted supplier to over 200 communities in Saskatchewan and now offers planters and hanging planters. Metal Man, celebrating 15 years in business. See their booth at Suma in Regina, April 14th to 17th. MetalManArt.com Metal Man, you think we do. 
For the leanest, meanest prices in the crop input industry, call Johnston's Grain. Johnston's offer the best prices in Western Canada on a huge range of products, including seed treatments, inoculants, glyphosate, pre burn tank mixes, in crop herbicides and insecticides, fungicides, plant growth stimulants, water conditioners, desiccants, and more. Johnston's has low overhead and top notch logistics so they can deliver products at ultra competitive prices. Call 844 324 7778 and ask to speak to an agronomist. The 620 CKRM Country Corner is brought to you by Foster's Audio Video, your Glassers TV and SaskTel authorized dealer in Carlisle. Get the newest cell phone today with an amazing SaskTel rate plan. The First Nations University of Canada invites you to join them for their spring celebration powwow April 20th and 21st at the Brandt Centre in Regina. Over 800 dancers and 20 drum groups from all over North America. Doors open at 9 a.m. both days. Full details at fnunivpowwow.ca. And Small Hands Big Dreams takes place Thursday, April 25th at the Casino Regina Show Lounge. It's the premier event supporting the Regina Early Learning Center, featuring stand-up comedy with Junior Cosman and the musical talents of Jack Semple. More details at earlylearning.ca. For more information, visit 620ckrm.com. Good evening. It's mostly cloudy and it's 10 degrees in Regina. I'm Corey Atkinson from the Harvard Media News Center with 620 CKRM News for Echo Sound in Fort Capel. Stay connected with a new cell phone from Echo Sound. Call 306-332-6711. When you tune in to catch the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on the radio, there will be a new voice in the broadcast booth. Harvard Media, the parent of this radio station, is announcing veteran broadcaster Dave Thomas will be the new voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Thomas brings a wealth of sports experience to the job, and he is looking forward to calling the games this year. There's a buzz, and you see what the team did in the offseason. You can just feel that, and it, there's a lot of excitement. The Riders will be heading to Saskatoon for training camp in May, with the first preseason game set for Monday, May 20th at Mosaic Stadium. Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe says he is willing to attend a televised meeting with his provincial counterparts and Justin Trudeau on the federal carbon levy. Moe says he believes it would give Saskatchewan a chance to highlight what the province is doing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. A conservative motion was debated at the House of Commons calling for the sit-down. Trudeau's response has been that he met with the premiers in 2016 when the pan-Canadian framework on climate change was first established. As spring arrives in Saskatchewan, so does CAA Saskatchewan's annual Worst Roads campaign. With over a quarter million kilometres of roads in the province, safety concerns abound for motorists, cyclists, cyclists and pedestrians alike. From today until April 29th, road users can nominate for and use the roads they deem most hazardous at caask.ca slash worst roads. The top 10 worst roads will be unveiled on April 30th with a chance to win a $1,000 Shell gift card. Australia is again calling for the recognition of Palestinian statehood. We've heard it before, but now in light of the past six months, those voices are growing stronger down under. On recognition, Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong says it doesn't just offer the Palestinian people an opportunity to realise their aspirations. It also strengthens the force, forces for peace and it undermines extremism. In her view, a two-state solution is the only hope for breaking the endless cycle of violence. Tom Rivers, ABC News, at the Foreign Desk. And Margot Robbie has her set's sight on another toy. The Barbie producer and star is making a Monopoly movie. With Hasbro and Lionsgate behind it, the company's announced today at the CinemaCon, CinemaCon conference in Las Vegas. Robbie and her production company, Lucky Chap, were the ones who got Barbie to the finish line after many years in the development stagnation. The film topped the box office in 2023 with over $1.4 billion in ticket sales worldwide. And now they'll bring that vision to the classic board game. Lionsgate is also developing a new Blair Witch project with the horror experts at Blum Blumhouse, the studio behind The Purge and Megan. It will be the first in a multi-year pact between Jason Blum's company and Lionsgate, drawing on the studio's library titles. That was your 620 CKRM News. Your weather is next. It's time to get out on the water. Now is the very best time of the year to buy a boat at Kevin's Marine. Get a Lund, Four Winds, or a pontoon boat powered by Mercury Motors at the lowest prices of the year. There are manufacturer's rebates, dealer discounts, low payment financing, plus a great selection of boats available. Big savings, big fun, all at Kevin's Marine. Kevin's Marine in Fort Capel. Get off the deck and get on the water. Stop by or shop online at kevinsmarine.com. Why is your phone in the corner wearing a dunce hat? 
because it's not a smartphone? Haven't you been to Echo Sound, your Saskatel authorized dealer? They have a wide selection of smartphones with all the latest features and great plans. So I can get a smartphone from Echo Sound, your Saskatel authorized dealer, and not have to get a second dunce hat? Hey, it won't be a dunce. Echo Sound, your Sastel authorized dealer in Fort Capel. Echosound.ca. It's 5.05 and I'm Corey Atkinson with your 620 ZKRM Precision Weather Forecast for Line X Regina. Serious protection, killer looks, 1865 McCara Street and Croft Electric. Keep the lights on in any weather with a standby generator from Croft Electric. Financing available, croftelectric.com. Tonight, evening clouds and then clearing with a low of minus 2. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and a high of 11. Friday, a mix of cloud and sun and a high of 17. Saturday, partly sunny and a high of 19. And Sunday, mostly sunny with a high of 16. Normals for the period are a high of 10 and a low of minus 3. Across the province at this hour, Saskatoon is 9, Swift Current is 11, Assiniboia 11, Yorkton Melville are 13, Mooseman Broadview 11, Estevan 10, and Weyburn 9. At this hour in Moose Jaw, it's partly cloudy. Winds are from the northwest at 46, gusting to 61, and it's 11. Regina is mostly cloudy. Winds are from the northwest at 36, gusting to 51, and it's 10. Get news and information anytime through the CKRM app or stream online at 620 ckrm.com i hate when my power's out it doesn't matter if it's a storm accident or planned outage losing power is frustrating but you can keep your lights on with a generac standby generator from croft electric even when your neighbors are sitting in the dark a generac standby generator can power your home don't let power outages ruin your day. Get your home a Genrack standby generator from Croft Electric. Financing now available. CroftElectric.com. Whenever you're pulling your trailer, you're likely shooting rocks at it constantly. Lucky for you, there's Linex. They can protect it by covering the front of your trailer, the fenders, your hitch, all the parts that take a beating. Linex will give your trailer a coating that's tough as nails, no matter what kind of trailer you have. And while you're at it, think about some Linex on your truck's rocker panels. There's a lot of rocks out there. Spray your trailer at Linex and make it unstoppable. 1865 McCarra Street. If it's happening in sports in Saskatchewan, we've got it covered. The all-new Sports Cage. Be part of the show. Call 936-6262 or toll-free 1-866-767-0620. On your radio at 620 CKRM and online at sportscage.com. We're here live in the Harvard Media Sports Cage in the Sports Cage, of course, in Harvard Studio 620 here at Mosaic Stadium. I'm Dave Thomas, the brand new voice of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Justin Dunk, of course, a member of the broadcast team. This is kind of like when your dad gave you the keys for the first time to the half ton and said, <laughs> have at her, kid. So we'll see what happens here. But we're so pleased now to be joined by the vice president of football operations and, of course, general manager of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Jeremy O'Day. New head coach, Corey Mace. Gentlemen, thank you so much for doing this today. I appreciate it, fellas. Congrats, by yeah, the way. Yeah, congrats. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Yeah, happy for you, man. You know, it's such a cool atmosphere that you have been able to build in culture when you talk about family. And I had an opportunity to listen to Coach Mace talk about family and the pillars and the structure that's involved with being a family. But you two family men look remarkably calm knowing that training camp is 32 days away and you're doing tryout camp south of the border. What are your emotion levels at right now at this part of the off season? Um, you know, this is this is probably the maybe the most relaxed part of the se season to be honest with you, right before camp, where your most of your roster is already set, and we're just kind of winding up on some free agent camps and uh, a few signings off our negotiation list here and there, and and uh, really just prep work right now. You know, just making sure the camp's all set and both starting to book our players in. The majority of those guys are are, are ready to roll and. Um, so from my aspect, you know, our, our, our season is kind of coming to an end in football operations and Mace probably says a little, probably say a little <laughs> different than I do, but, but I think, uh, for us, it's, uh, it's kind of the, the, this, I wouldn't say it's slower, but it's a little bit more relaxing. Coach, your family's made a move across the country. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's certainly, you know, to echo, you know, what J.O. was saying, and, uh, you know, we've certainly d uh, done our due diligence as an organization, getting uh, new faces in and, and making sure all the guys are excited to come up and get things rolling. Guys are ready to rock, I can, I can promise you that. And then, obviously, uh, 
you know, they're doing a great job and, and, and coaches is well preparing for the draft coming up. So, yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the quiet before the storm, so to speak. Um, but, yeah, once things get rolling, they're rolling, baby. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about the draft that is coming up. The countdown is on. And obviously you do a ton of work, right? And there was the combine that was held recently. The, the two questions I want to ask, and I've always been curious. Number one, the combine, right? It is almost a one-off in some instances. Can it really affect a player and his ranking on your list that much? And what are you looking for when you are looking at a player? Because everybody's doing the same drill. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, I think, first of all, your, your first question is it definitely can. And, and we're not talking about spots. We're talking about rounds. It can actually move, your, move you up, up and wow. down rounds and uh, for where you had pr projected before you went into it. So if a guy... If a guy's really good on tape and you like the way he looks and he goes and runs a time that just isn't isn't the speed that a, that a pro runs, uh, it can affect him. And so it's, it is something that we definitely definitely look at him from. Um, but what we're looking for is, is we're, we're looking at everything. You know, we're looking at how they compete against guys that are maybe at the upper echelon of the guys they played against. Some of the guys that came from NCA see how they they, they adjust to the rule differences, um, how they act and. Uh, you know, in the interviews, their interviews are always interesting. You're trying to get to know the person to see if he's going to fit within the locker room. Um, so just a ton of evaluation that goes into it, and then you got to compile it all together into the 100 to 150 players that you evaluate and make sure you have a good, uh, a, a good resume for each guy. Coach Mace, your perspective. Of course, you're a player, Port Moody, BC, great Canadian, but you also now have the opportunity to be on the other side of this evaluation process going into a draft. The differences? Yeah, I think just wearing a different hat, right, and looking at it from that standpoint. But just, uh, just, just totally, um, I think, having the wherewithal of what those guys are going through in the process. And, uh, you know, certainly, you know, we, we hold some weight in it because they, they all know that that's the grand stage for them. And so you kind of get an understanding on how these guys prepare for situations like that. It's, you know, week to week, you, you got to be prepared to be on the grand stage, you know, when you become a pro. So uh, a lot of stuff goes into it, like J.O. attested to. Um, but certainly, you know, each year you, you see guys that, uh, you know, will maybe weren't talked about so much that, you know, come out on mock drafts or mm -hmm. stuff like that. And maybe guys that were front runners didn't perform as well. So there's always jockeying for position. And, you know, those guys at the end of the day, they're competing, which ultimately they hope to get paid to do. Coach, you were telling us that you just kind of got settled here. We're unpacking some boxes over the Easter weekend. I'm curious how many Jordans were in there and have you leveled up Jeremy's shoe game? Yeah, no, you know, J.O. is slick. J.O., he, he got some, he got some, he wears some nice, he's got some nice swag to him. Okay. Uh, but my Jordans, man, I tell you, that's a really, when kids came around, hey, that, the Jordan fund has gone. So, <laughs> you know, I, I have all my classics. I haven't bought a new pair in, in years, man. So th those are just going to remain there uh, for display. Maybe I'll wear them once in a while, but uh, that hasn't changed, man. They're still there. What's your favorite pair? Ooh, that's, that's a tough one for me. That's a tough one. Probably the, probably the, uh, probably the Gamma 11s. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, okay. yeah. There you okay. go. I see. <laughs> you guys were I should say somewhat busy over the Easter weekend. You added Chase Claypool to the negotiation list. Jeremy, I'll start with you. There was this Twitter account online, like NFL notifications or something, that talked about potentially some negotiations ongoing with Claypool and BC and Claypool and the Roughers. I don't think that was true, but how did this move come to fruition where you put him on the neg list? Yeah, we were actually thinking about putting him on for a couple weeks, um, and it's just a matter of if, if a player is a free agent for a while. I know that a team actually had him on right after our draft uh, years ago, and um, it's just, you know, it's not, not very much different than what we would do with an American player that's been in the NFL for a number of years, and eventually maybe you think that they might consider coming up to Canada. So we haven't had any discussions with, with Clay or with Claypool or his, or his representation. So it's just uh, purely a thing to hold his rights, and if there's any, any chance that he ever wants to come back and play uh, in Canada, we just wanted to have his rights. And um, guys move on and off the negotiation left, left and right, and we do it every single day. And, um, obviously, he was, he's a big name, and um, just put him on if there's ever a chance that we can get a chance to talk to him, we'd love to. And you mentioned that guys move on and off the list with regularity, and you would obviously know that really well. How do you decide, let's say in this example with Chase Claypool, that you're going to put him on and take somebody off, or in the future if you did take Claypool off? Like, what's the decision-making process? Like? Well, it's, it's, a lot of it is just a, a matter of, of, of getting lucky and, and trying to predict. Um, there's, sometimes there's no right or wrong, and sometimes guys come up to our league and they've been on four different negotiation lists prior to it, 
it's just all a matter of time and to be honest with you justin and um, sometimes you 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 put him on at the right time, and three other teams would have loved to have him, but they took him off, and now he's now he's at the point he'll consider. And sometimes uh, we've had guys that said they're not going to come up to Canada, and then a year later they sign with another team. So um, it's just a timing thing, and and then mainly just you want to know, um, you know, do you have a spot? They're all very important to be to be honest with you, and if you if you have a spot, they're they're you know, are you going to use it? And and you never know what can come out of it. It's an all-new Sports Cage here with Harvard Media. You can go online to sportscage.com. We're streaming the show now, so you get to see our faces and your gentlemen's... Well, it's a good thing for you guys, not so much for me, the radio guy, but whatever. We're enjoying it. We're so glad you took some time for us today. Coach Corey Mace, Jeremy O'Day, the general manager of the Rough Riders, is here. Justin Dunk, I'm Dave Thomas. And I, I was kind of curious watching you, Mr. O'Day, as you came up on stage... And I wanted to see how you would greet Dunk because he breaks a lot of stories. Is that <laughs> difficult in your world when Dunk had it out there already? Like, come on. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the last time he had one of our stories. It's been a while, so. Free agency, maybe? Wow, maybe you're like agency. challenging him openly. I'm trying to think. Come on. I'm trying to think. I can't remember the last time he had one. Um, well, that'd be the net last natural time. But yeah. Last year at the Combine, I think, uh, was it Kean? We were talking about? Yeah, yeah, he had that and one. And that was that helpful. We, yeah, that was a good one. Um, you know, the reality is we try to, you know, we're trying to control our message, and if we got something that we want to put out, and we, you know, we want to try to control it, but sometimes, sometimes he gets his information, he does a good job of it, of, of getting the insider, and that's why, that's why he's got the, the name, the CFL Insider, but, um, you know, the reality is we try to control our messaging, but, you know, sometimes it's, um, you know, it's it just, it, sometimes it doesn't matter how it comes out. It's going to come out eventually, and, and uh, it's just kind of what we deal with on a regular basis. Dunk bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Mace, you, you talked about uh, communication is what we're kind of talking about here, and I had an opportunity to listen to you speak yesterday at a luncheon here in Regina, and I came away with one of the things that you talked about was culture. And it's kind of a buzzword in sports, let's face it, right? But... If you're trying to change a culture or establish a culture, how do you do that? Because your words yesterday, I'm like, wow, I'm like totally buying in. Like, give me some cleats. You don't want to see me in cleats, but do that. <laughs> how do you go ahead and bring your culture in? Yeah, I think, I think the, the, the most important thing is just, uh, you know, developing those relationships. I know people hear me talk about that all the time, but, um, you know, it's not something that you just want to put a bunch of words up and this is what we do. Uh, you develop those relationships and, you know, you could have a phrase, you know, uh, for, for example, um, but how you get somebody to understand it, it, it could show up different to how you attack each player with that, right? So if you have an understanding of who they are, um, you know, being able to, to provide examples for each individual player and really to get everybody to see it the same, man, that's, that's, that's the best way to do it. Training camp announced yesterday going to be back in Saskatoon. I, I don't know if you know what to expect in Saskatoon, but uh, Jeremy, I, I know you've been there a number of years. What does it mean to the team to be back up in Saskatoon, having fans cheering during drills? It's awesome. You know, it's, it's just an opportunity for us to get outside of, of Regina and make sure everyone understands it's the Saskatchewan team, not just in the, in the city of Regina. And um, it's also what it breaks up kind of the monotony of the year. You know, it's a long season, so it's a good, a good opportunity for us to get up there for a number of weeks, but also all being under the same roof. It's nice to be here. It's nice to live in, you know, sleep in your own bed at night. Uh, but for our guys to be in the, under the same, same roof every single night, it's going to be with that camaraderie. We've got a whole new coaching staff. Uh, we're active in free agency, and uh, we'll have a, a fair bit of the team that's going to be turned over. So it's important for us to go up there and get that camaraderie, and, and then also great for our fans. Coach Mace, we had Glenn Suter on. We had Jeff Fairholm. They were talking about, you know, you, you get to be a veteran, and maybe your outlook on training camp changes a little bit. Do you have to go ahead and set a tone early again with new faces and familiar faces? Uh, I, I think it, just with the new staff coming in, nobody really knows what to expect, you know, from us as a, as a coaching staff. So, I mean, that's going to happen regardless. But, you know, as far as uh, veteran players go, you know, I was certainly one myself, you know, at one yeah. point or another, say with J.O. Um, you know, we're going to be leading on those guys uh, to be the setters of the culture. Uh, so, you know, whether they're, you know, guys like Hardwick coming in, who's a CFL vet, but he's new to the team, um, or vets that are returning, you know, to the team under a new regime, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to establish those leaders, and a lot of those guys are vets, so uh, hopefully they'll be, uh, you know, those will be guys who kind of set the culture from a work ethic standpoint um, from, from jump. 
Trevor Harris was kind enough to give Ryder Nation an update on his health status, right? And it sounds very promising that he, and I talked about it earlier, if you projected his totals from five games over the course of an 18 game season, he'd be number two in passing yards last year. Trevor Harris obviously coming in is, is the guy, but you've talked about developing the other guy. But if I'm the guy in Trevor Harris, do I want to hear about that? Or does that just <laughs> come with the, uh, the territory? No, I don't think he probably, he probably doesn't want to hear about it. He probably wants to keep playing as long as he can. And so that's just natural for our guys. But the reality is we all get older and eventually our careers, they end it, you know. And so uh, it's important for us to have the next guy, but also um, for that guy to be able to perform at a high level, just like, um, you know, the, the situation we had last year with Trevor, Trevor getting hurt. So we want to make sure that we have the next guy up. And, you know, we've got a competition coming into camp for the number two, and we're excited to see those guys go. Obviously, there's a lot of excitement. People will be watching that. Uh, you'll be watching the whole group as a whole. What are you going to be focused on watching your football team do? What, what level of execution? Is it mental prep? What, what do you watch the most? What is going to be the definition of a player to you at training camp? Yeah, just, just looking at the pillars of what we want to identify ourselves as as a team. Um, you know, a lot of that instantly is going to have to be doing with the mental aspect of it. Uh, being a smart football team, being a fast and physical one. Now, obviously, you know, where we are uh, with football and training camp, not like the old days with, you know, me and J.O. had to wear pads every every day. Uh, but, you know, from a physicality standpoint, you know, we'll have certain periods and situations where we'll be able to evaluate that. So that's, that's the main thing, and then just making sure that, it, you know, we're, we're executing with efficiency. So, you know, from a broad perspective, I think those will be, those will be the, probably the top tier things that we'll be looking at right out the gate. I'm curious, just for the two of you, watching you interact and come on stage, it seems like your relationship has become tight pretty quickly. What's that process been like from the interview process, Corey May saying, I want this effing job, and you guys actually now working day to day together, it seems like you're in lockstep and get along really well. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I'll speak for myself. You know, I thought from the interview, uh, we clicked, we saw things eye to eye. You know, I think some of that has to do with, uh, you know, the, the trench dog respect for one another, you know what I mean? Playing, playing in the trenches. Uh, but, I mean, the guy doesn't like tomatoes. I don't like tomatoes. So, I mean, that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, 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 uh, we're very lucky to to be able to, to, to live in the same city year round. Um, you know, J.O. and his family's been outstanding uh, with, with, with my family as well. And, you know, we don't just talk about that. That's, that's really important to us. And, you know, hopefully it's, a, uh, it's infectious for everybody else. Um, and certainly our relationship has been outstanding since, since uh, taking the job. Jeremy, how do you view it? Yeah, I'm the complete opposite of what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's been great. It's been great. Um, you know, it's a great question because, um, you know, our relationship, obviously, we, we played uh, against each other. We have mutual friends. And, and so there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of research you have to do when you're hiring a new head coach. And uh, then you go through the interview process. And, you know, I remember uh, after the first, you know, interview, I asked, you know, Kyle Carson, our assistant GM, who spent uh, a long time with Corey before, just, you know, is, is, is that the guy that, that, that you see on a daily basis or is that just the guy that's, that's interviewing, right? So, um, and Kyle confirmed, you know, that's what, what you what you got in that interview is exactly him. And um, and then since then, yeah, it's been um, I don't, you know it's been seamless. He's you know he's packed up his family and moved him across the country and uh, moved here. And I, you know I was telling him how bad the, the weather was here in, in, in the winter. And then cakewalk. And, and then it was nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> it was nothing. So, um, but it's been great. We've we've had time to, to travel and we've been you know we've been through a. a uh, CFL Combine now together and, and uh, you know it's, it's been really good and we're excited about, uh, excited, about, excited about getting the season going. You mentioned the, the winter that we didn't have. Has anything else caught you off guard Coach Mace? Uh, you know I, I knew it was windy today I, I, you know there's some kick up of some dust caught me in the eyeballs <laughs> today but uh, no that everything uh, everything that I thought it was going to be it's been much nicer. You know what I mean? As yeah. far as the winter and, and the wind and stuff like that. So uh, nothing's caught myself off, off guard. Um, you know, I told the wife that all my interactions with people in, from this province, everybody's been extremely nice. And that's, that's you know, held, to, held to, to point so far since we've been here. And uh, I always have to say, for whatever reason, the, 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 the humor from the people, the dry <laughs> humor and sarcasm, which is one of my favorite. It's awesome in this entire province. I love that. 
Okay, your emotions now as we get set heading towards training camp. We got the draft to go. Then you get to get on the field. Just what comes to mind? Oh man, just just so excited. You know, as uh, we do have a few staff members as well who've moved here uh, year round. Um, you know, as we're in the building and talking with the other coaches over Zoom, just just seeing all the things that we've put together, uh, what this will look like for us, and just being able to you know, share that with the team um, and just see what that transforms in, in, in real time. Uh, it's just an exciting process for us to this point, but just, you know, we're just kind of chomping at the bit here. I could sit here and talk all day, and obviously we're not allowed to do that, but <laughs> before we go, I'll ask one question. It's the same of you both, and Jeremy, when you mentioned at the end of free agency, you, you said, yeah, we were active. I wouldn't want to be that active, but we had to be that active. What is your message to Rider Nation as we get set for the upcoming draft and get ready for training camp in Saskatoon? Yeah, a whole, whole, new, whole new team. You know, I think that um, we've had a couple of tough years in a row and, and obviously we're looking, looking, uh, looking forward to getting back on track. You know, we've got this great facility, great fan base, uh, great, great coaching staff. We've got players that are excited to play and we, we need to get back to our winning ways. And, and uh, that's what we're excited for and just want our fan base that, to be proud of what we put on the field and and that's really that's really what it's kind of echoing through across the building and, and what's what's been so nice for me is the guys that we've recently signed how quickly they're they're kind of meshing into to rider nation and getting in, involved with it and i think we've we've had some good fits there with the guys that are going to fit in the locker room but um just you know get your season tickets and and uh we're excited for the season and, and can't wait to get going coach mace your message yeah, just uh, certainly everything that you guys have always wanted this team to be and uh, kind of a reflection of, of this province, uh, that's what we're looking to put forward. You know, hard working, uh, hard working football team, uh, definitely a team that has pride and, and leads the, the, the green and white. Um, but certainly, you know, uh, as I envision this and, and taking this, this position, um, I envision this place rocking, man. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the fan base out there to get behind us. Uh, we'll work for you. You work for us. We'll do this thing together. The countdown to the camp is on. Jeremy O'Day, Coach Mace, thank you so much for doing this this afternoon. You Appreciate bet. you, gentlemen. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Sports Cage continues. Of course, it's brought to you by Busy Bee Doors. Busy Bee will repair or replace your residential or commercial garage doors so you don't get stuck on or out. Catch the buzz. Busy Bee Doors, the garage door specialist. We'll be back with much more from Harvard Studio 620 here at Mosaic Stadium. It's the all-new Sports Cage, live streaming at sportscage.com. And, of course, here on 620 CKRM. Every Sunday morning, wake up to country music legends on 620 CKRM. Sunday morning classics. Celebrate the legends that paved the way and define the heart and soul of country music. Relive the unforgettable classic hits and the legacy of country's greatest artists. Join us this Sunday and every Sunday as we honor the icons who brought country music to life. It's a journey through the rich history of country music. Sunday morning classics for Regina. A funeral home and cemetery. Sundays at 8 a.m. on the voice of Saskatchewan. 620 CKRM. It all started with a magic show in the garage. I'll now pull a rabbit out of my hat. It all went downhill from there when the magician, instead of a rabbit, pulled a <clears throat> rat out of his hat. Oh my. Run, kiddos, run! <laughs> Call Busy Bee Doors. They can fix or replace any commercial or garage door. They've got some magic of their own. Benson? Benson, has anyone seen a rabbit? Busy Bee Doors, the garage door specialists. Hi, this is Stephen Art from the Tire Stewardship of Saskatchewan. We're the ones responsible for recycling your tires. It's spring cleaning time again, and you may just have some old used tires bouncing around. Whether you're doing that spring tire changeover, or you just never got around to hanging that old tire swing, why not recycle your old used tires instead of just letting them pile up? We have a return to retailer program to keep them out of your way with drop-off locations around the province. Find your closest return to retailer at tssk.ca to see how you can recycle your tires. If it's winter and your cow goes... What it means is... Ice in the trough? What the heck am I supposed to do with this? I can't drink it. Haven't you heard of the Calm Solar Livestock Watering System? It keeps water in the trough flowing, and you can put your pump pretty much anywhere without the cost of hooking up to the grid. There's meaning in that, Moo. Learn more about the Kelm Solar Livestock Watering System at KelmSolar.com. Kelm Solar. We move water. 
Hey farmers, are you tired of trying to use little equipment for big jobs? Next time, swing by Prairie Land Rental and Sales and pick up the right tools for the job. From skid steers, excavators, and wood chippers to everything in between, Prairie Land Rental and Sales has what you need to get the biggest jobs done. Centrally located in Regina to serve all of southern Saskatchewan, they offer pickup and delivery at reasonable rates. For equipment rentals, sales, parts, and service for a wide variety of construction equipment, as well as your lawn and garden needs, visit prairielandrental.com. Invest in your farm. The Fence 700 Vario Series Tractor is your checklist machine. Powerful? Check. Reliable? Check. Comfortable? Check. Not only does this series have great custom cab configurations and fuel efficiency, but it also comes with the Fent Gold Star Customer Care Warranty, which covers your maintenance for the first three years or 3,000 hours. Visit Nick's Service in Emerald Park or go to nickservice.com to get a quote on the Fent 700 Vario Series. Fast internet isn't just a city thing. In the country, on the farm, or at the cabin. Access brings you super fast internet that includes unlimited data, so it's full stream ahead. And now you can ditch the dish and watch TV your way with Access Next TV Stream. Restart shows up to 72 hours, even without setting them to record. Add Smart Wi-Fi Plus to your package and your entire home will always have a full signal, backyard to basement. Visit myaccess.ca for more details. Sask Lotteries brings communities together. In Saskatchewan, Lottomax, Lotto 649, and other lottery products fund over 12,000 sport, culture, and recreation groups. That means your money really goes a long way. It helps people all across the province to connect and get active, to experience arts and culture, and to enjoy parks, public spaces, and activities that build vibrant communities. When you support Sask Lotteries, everyone wins. Hi, Mom. Hi, Grandma Bentley. Well, hello, Otto. Diesel, what are you and your dad doing today? We just got our oil change at Moose Jaw Truck Shop. Yeah, Mom. Thought maybe I could take your car in for you. No, you can't. Not unless you take me with you. You know how much I love their cookies. All month, oil changes are just $37.77 for cars, $67.77 for trucks and SUVs, and $117.77 for European and diesel. They'll see you soon at moosejawtruckshop.com. Back to the all new Sports Cage. Text 306 936 6262 620 CKRM. Back here at Harvard Studio 620, the Sports Cage is live, of course, on Harvard Media's sportscage.com. Of course, you can see the live streaming there, or of course, listening in here on 620 CKRM. We thank you for joining us this very celebratory afternoon. Here at Mosaic Stadium, great teamwork has made it come with uh, guys working in the crews and the bits, and Maz has uh, been hard at it all afternoon, of course. As mentioned, the Sports Cage today brought to you by Busy Bee Doors. Busy Bee will repair or replace your residential or commercial garage door so you don't get stuck in or out. Catch the buzz. Busy Bee Doors, the garage door specialists. Of course, a busy night coming up in the SJHL tonight. I don't know if you caught it last night, but... The Humble Broncos and the Melfort Mustangs played triple overtime last night. Uh, Humboldt was able to go ahead and cut into Melfort series lead with the triple overtime victory. They'll play game four tonight with that series, of course, being Melfort in front two games to one. Uh, earlier this afternoon in the Major Leagues of Baseball, the Seattle Mariners and Toronto Blue Jays went to extra innings, but it wasn't good as uh, the Jays gave up five runs in the 10th and fell 6-1 to the Mariners. The Jays still win the series two games to one, but they kind of ran out of relievers in the bullpen this afternoon at Rogers Center. Whole host of games on in the NHL tonight. The Western Hockey League playoffs, of course, will resume themselves here on Friday night. Of course, a couple of series we'll be watching in our province as the Saskatoon Blades will be taking on the Red Deer Rebels. That is, of course, a repeat from what we had last year when the Blades did the reverse sweep on the Rebels. And then we've got the Moose Jaw Warriors and Swift Current Broncos also. going to be a fun time in the Western Hockey League playoffs. As I mentioned, they'll resume here on Friday evening. Uh, so did uh, Jeremy let it out of the bag who the first round draft pick is going to be? No. Did we No? He did not say. But he did say that I found it intriguing because I've often wondered because you put so much emphasis on one thing, right? So you're watching a prospective player. They play their season, right? They play the season. They do what they do. You think it's good. And then they show up at the combine where they got a shot, right? You got a shot. You got to be prepared for it. And I 
I said, I, I was surprised. I said, like, so how much does that determine the draft order, the ranking that's on your list? And he said, can actually determine it by round, not just by position. So you can fall a couple of rounds if you don't perform well, which, again, there's some athletes that opt out of participating, and you can understand why. If you're not at your best to run a 40, you don't want to run a 40. Well, look down in the NFL, Caleb, Willem, Caleb Williams wouldn't throw at the combine. Yeah. Because they're worried that his arm strength is not... Um, it, here's the thing where a lot of people that when Sam Emelis in his rookie year, I thought, yeah, he's okay, but was he, especially when, um, it was, was it, um, Cherry from the Huskies went to the Lions? Yep. Nathan Cherry. Yeah. Nathan Cherry. Yep. D line, D tackle. Mm -hmm. We could have Canadian. We could have used, I'm like, oh man. But then to see Sam Emelis in year two last year, so Jeremy and the scouting staff, they obviously saw yeah. something, and then you're like, okay, you can't always judge this on a year one to be like, if he's there at year one, but well, where to? And then you see this now to be like, he's turning into a game breaker. So as a, as a coach fan, as someone who likes mm -hmm. to push the panic button, and we do in Rider Nation <laughs> when, you know, it's the second game of the season, <laughs> and they haven't scored eight touchdowns, and you're like, oh, come on, what is this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not saying... That, but that probably was one of the truest tests of, I really don't know what I'm talking about. Right and there. They, okay. they probably do. But Sam Lemelis would be a great example of look at that progression from year one to year two with multiple quarterbacks. That's the difference. Yes. Yes. And coordinators now too, right? Yeah. Think about it. Three coordinators in three seasons for the young guy, right? And yeah. here's the guy that I think that is flown under the radar. And, and I've got a soft spot on him. Former Saskatchewan Husky Nelson Lacombe. Remember how high we selected yeah, him in the I draft. Know. Then he blew out his Achilles. Oh, man. Right? Doing the off-season workout. And then last year he got into the lineup and you could really see that he was starting to, you know, get some traction, if you will. And then injury struck again. Yeah. So he's, he's going to be back this year. I'm really excited to see where his development is going to take. Exactly. Him. Because if he can put a full 18 games out there, like what mm -hmm. can he, could look at, look at his, look at the family lineage. It's, it's there. Yeah. Um, to see. So, I mean, in the CFL draft, it's not that deep. You have to make those picks count. Yep. And you know, a lot of teams where, and I've said this for a long time for the past 20 years, um, John Huffnagel, and his crew, Dave Dickinson, the best talent eyes in the CFL. They get everybody's future free agents. Yeah. Because they are out there, and they and you'll see them to be like, even the kid they took as a receiver last year, and I'm like, I don't, and then you seem like, yeah, once again, they don't, do, they don't miss a lot. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see the riders kind of put that together with some of these picks to be like, okay, and then, you know, and that's how you have to build your team now. Oh. With one-year deals and once they hit free agency. So Nathan Cherry, when he becomes a free agent, I hope, that, you know, he comes home to Ryder Nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, and it's, it's, it's unfortunate he got hurt last year. But when I saw him, because I was like, that's an immediate impact guy. Yep. And sometimes you're like, we just want the now. We're not thinking about the future. Because he could come in now. He could have five sacks playing D-line. I hate to say this. And, and you hate, I hate to compare player to player. Because that's really unfair, right? But remember what a roster and ratio breaker Keith Shulligan yes. and Zach Evans were. Yes. And remember, they were both taken by Ottawa in that expansion draft, and all of a sudden, our national defense, our na national nose tackle spot gets blown up. So all of a sudden, if you can insert Nathan Cherry there, I, I know that Nicholas Cage is an outside pass rusher, so he's not going to fit that interior build. But can you imagine the ratio flexibility you have if he was around? Well, it's also, too, is when you see like teams like the Stamps or the Bombers, where they, if they go all Canadian on the O-line. So mm -hmm. that's five spots right there. Yeah. So how much easier does it uh, make filling out your roster when you know you have five Canadian starters and a sixth as backup? But yeah. uh, like um, we had uh, chatting with Fairholm uh, last season, he said, listen, when injuries happen, if you're on your sixth, seventh, and eighth offensive lineman, doesn't matter what team you are, you're going to have trouble. That, that's not rider exclusive. That's CFL exclusive mm -hmm. just because of the roster size. Absolutely. And that's where luck comes in. You hate to say it, but there's luck. There's luck involved in the roster assembly. There's also luck in the draft too, right? Because you sometimes have to decipher because the CFL draft does happen after the NFL draft, but then there's that window where NFL teams can sign yeah. guys that don't get drafted. So that's where you're rolling the dice. And I'm the safest guy around. 
I'm not going to kid you. I do not want to lose out on anything that can be a guarantee. And that is where I would have a struggle in rolling the dice. Oh, he might just stick down there. You know what I mean? Well, or you get those tweener guys. Like, look at MLS in the off season, where he's, okay, he's good enough that he's entertaining offers, but is he going to go? And I would love to, I hope there's a cautionary tale. And there's enough guys lately that will go down, they'll train, they'll, they're there, they get a little signing bonus, but essentially they're training camp fodder. And then they come back, and then they can never get on track for that CFL season, it seems, because of the, just the, whether it's the body composition they have to put together for the NFL as opposed to the CFL. Mm -hmm. And we saw this like with Justin McInnes, like that, that prime example of you come back and you're never really right and you're out of sync and you don't get here till Labor Day. And it almost seems unfair is not the right term because there's nothing fair and it's a shot at playing in the NFL. So and then they would, and yeah. they would all take it. But when they look back, would they be a better off to play another full CFL season, really build that stock? It's like how the Calgary Flames wrecked Sam Bennett <laughs> when they brought him in at 18. Yeah, okay, true. but they needed him. Yeah. Send him back to junior, let him score 75 goals that year. Let him go win mm -hmm. a gold medal with Team Canada. And then at 19, maybe you think about, oh, he's not, he can't play in the A. Let him get so good that when you do get him, he's playing at this level, but you bring him in at 18, you put too much pressure on him, and you yeah. wreck him, and then it goes from there. Because I think once these guys get back, we're like, well, he had a shot at the NFL. We need him to be this guy, like, right now. Yeah. And the, maybe the pressure just gets to be too much. Well, I, going back to your previous example, right, where guys are here and begin to establish themselves, go down, take their shot. Let's face it. You've got to go ahead and you've got to applaud anyone that's taking their shot. Oh, yeah. Andy Fantuz, right? When he went down to the Chicago Bears that season and he came back, and again, he had just changed his body composition, his mindset, because again, your goal as an athlete, his goal was to play in the NFL that season, and his dream didn't come true. So now he has to reset, refocus, and he just wasn't the same guy when he came back that year. Well, and a lot of it, too, is you have your heart playing on the NFL playing in the NFL, and if that doesn't come, look at, look at it in normal everyday life when something doesn't come through for us and how bummed you could be. Could you yeah. imagine on a, on a grand stage where everybody's kind of watching and either rooting for you or against you, and if it doesn't play out, hey, no, there's no harm that you didn't make an NFL roster, but internally, and you're like, okay, I guess it's back to, oh man, where it's not that they don't have nice hotels and fly on planes here, but I bet you there's some nicer Four Seasons hotels that NFL teams oh. stay in and with the Jets and all of that to go along with it. So For sure, absolutely. I'm still crushed that I got cut from my grade 7 volleyball team. That's, I, I, I had height. Come so on. when people were like, oh, Nathan, Rourke, no, stick around as long as you possibly can because let's see, he got a chance to play for the Patriots and stick around because this year, new coaching staff, what if he does get that chance? Stick around as long until they don't want you because he will always have a job in the CFL and a high ticket job whenever he comes back. Mm -hmm. So I hope that someone is smart enough, especially after that Jags preseason game last year. Like Doug Peterson, yeah. why wouldn't you give this guy a shot? You're a former quarterback yourself. No, I, I am with you. And so long as you've got a shot, right? Yep. As long as I've got that shot, I'm sticking around. And again, Nathan Rourke, I'm not going to kid you. I remember going into the season and I'm like, ooh, man, the BC Lions, they're going to go with this Nathan Rourke kid. <laughs> and I remember he came here to Mosaic Stadium and he didn't fare terrifically well in his first game here. And so then, well, we're going to name off season. We're going to name him the starter. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know. But Rick Campbell shows he knows what he's doing and what he has. And again, great assessment right there, right? Well, it's funny. It's like, would you ever bet against Huff and Dave Dickinson? No, you, you know, no. And, no. Or, or Campbell, for that matter, to be like, no, I think I know what I've got there. Uh, it's the all-new Sports Cage. We're live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium. It's been a great day here. That's Dave Thomas. I'm Chris Masrick, the director of Harvard Sports Media. So we've launched the sportscage.com today, where you've been able to watch the show online. And this whole streaming concept that we're going to be able to bring you more content than ever before in new and different ways is pretty exciting. It's probably not going to be the only time you're going to see us here at Mosaic Stadium here. Uh, on screen. If you're listening on 620 CKRM, old school radio, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. In the car, in the truck. Yep. If you're, uh, what, what did I pass the other day? Somebody hauling an auger at low speed, kind of on the, you, it, <laughs> it only in Saskatchewan. Okay, so a single lane highway, yeah. each side. They're trying to drive, you know, on the over the line, but there's only so much room. And when you're pulling an auger, I mean, you can't be in the ditch or whatever. No, it's, like, no. it's awesome. 38 cars lined up behind and everybody's impatient and I'm like 
Oh, that's good to be home. <laughs> I love that. So if you missed the big announcement, Dave Thomas is the new voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Luke Mullender is back as uh, the color commentator. We've got Justin Dunk, who's working the room over there like a beauty. Yeah. He's going to be the host of the pregame, <laughs> the halftime, and the postgame show. Wes Cates is back. Jer Fairholm is back. Uh, rider legend Glenn Suter is back. And we've also added uh, former global sports anchor and... Um, football guy, just a longtime sports guy, Derek Bidwell. He's going to be your sideline reporter. Yes. Just a, uh, a long history, and we're super proud for this refresh of Ryder football, and um, it's pretty exciting. Thank you for listening today. Someone's, is that, no, you, you, is the bar still open? Is that what you're asking if we want to drink? <laughs> Live radio, like, are we allowed? I don't know. I don't know. Are there CRTC uh, rules hey, against I'm this? I'm new here. Uh, you tell me. I don't you're know still on probation, That's right. sir. Uh, Do you I, even know no, what the you. HR department thank is? Thank you. I Come appreciate that. that. Good yeah, stock right. answer. <laughs> um, we want to thank for everybody for being part of the sports cage. We're going to take a break here. This part of the sports cage is brought to you by Busy Bee Doors. Busy Bee will repair or replace your residential or commercial garage doors so you don't get stuck in or out. Catch the buzz. Busy Bee Doors, the garage door specialist. Uh, we'll take a break and be back. It's the Sports Cage on 620 CKRM. Hi, this is Stephen Art from the Tire Stewardship of Saskatchewan. We're the ones responsible for recycling your tires. It's spring cleaning time again, and you may just have some old used tires bouncing around. Whether you're doing that spring tire changeover, or you just never got around to hanging that old tire swing, why not recycle your old used tires instead of just letting them pile up? We have a return to retailer program to keep them out of your way with drop-off locations around the province. Find your closest return to retailer at tssk.ca to see how you can recycle your tires. Equities, bonds, yield, PE, ratios, Utility, value, growth, cap, US, small cap, Canada, mid global, cap, emerging, budget, taxes, budget, unemployment, 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 budget, 6262. We're live from Mosaic Stadium this afternoon. Uh, thanks once again to Jeremy O'Day and uh, Corey Mace for coming by. Yeah. Um, just to get that much time from them, get a chance to, to talk about them. I mean, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a, a nice buzz around the football team. People are excited again. Um, it's we, well deserved, though. It's well deserved know, buzz. That's and, why we are excited. I know. And we, you know, we got it's. It's so easy to get excited about rider football. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're, we can get so passionate and so angry in the moment, but we can forget so quickly, and then we're uh, we're back in love again. It's Masters weekend, and you just said, and I'm the exact same way. If Tiger's in, I want Tiger to win because if, if Tiger's in, it's like the Yankees. If the Yankees are in the playoffs, it's interesting. If Tiger's in the mix, golf's interesting. I'm about to leave when you said
because when, when the house of cards finally crumbled, it all fell apart. But look how long he held it together. And him and his crew, like he must have had everybody paid off. You don't say a word, anything. Because now when you hear <laughs> all of the stuff went on to be like, and you were winning all these golf tournaments too, like all of that other stuff didn't until that time and then just fell off the cliff. Can you imagine how much the movie producer is going to get that gets the rights to his story? Like that is going to be a sensational show. And you know what? I'm even cheering for his kid, Charlie. I'm, Charlie, I, I, I was wow. just going to say, can you imagine wh wh whoever the agent is that's going to mm -hmm. be representing his son, yeah. the, the stuff that's probably already coming their way as far as we need you to do this, we need to do this, he's going to have this kind of clubs, we're going to do that. Like, it's just, oh, yeah. um, it's like LeBron James's kids, but without the obnoxiousness <laughs> of LeBron James. <laughs> Who? <laughs> so true. I know so it is true. so true. But the Masters on this weekend, um, and and there's so many. And I know a lot of people love to bet on golf, but I. Who who are we thinking? There is it. Is it? Is it Bryson DeChambeau? Who's the who's the bad guy again? Who do we? Who are we not supposed to like? Yeah. Is it Bryson? Is it? It's anyone that defected, right? You're not supposed to like the people. That oh, I like for the money. Well, no, I, I like those live golf guys because they were smart. They're like, there's money here yeah. and less <laughs> rules, and you yeah. can wear shorts. Sure, why not? True. Um, Dustin Johnson, Wayne Gretzky's son-in-law. I yeah. mean, you can. It's it is cool when you see and they'll show and you'll see Wayne and Janet in the crowd and stuff like that. Yes. Because it's not them celebrities, it's them cheering on their son-in-law at yeah. what he's doing, which you kind of like, that's where you're like, you like Gretzky, because I'm like, yeah, he's just a normal guy and a dad. Yeah, that, no, isn't that true? And yeah, he's, you know what, he really comes as advertised. I had an opportunity to do a dinner with him once, and he made sure everyone was taken care of, and I'm like, that is so cool. Because uh, you're Wayne Gretzky, you don't have to do that. I know, you don't have to do that. It's the all-new Sports Cage on uh, 620 CKRM, Chris Mazur, Dave Thomas. Um, it's so funny. And remember at the start of the season when the Vegas Golden Knights like won 20 games in a row? <laughs> yeah. And then last night, and I don't know why, I'm not paying attention. They're the, the second wild card team and they're three points, but they're ahead of St. Louis, but they're three points yeah. out of the seventh spot. I'm like, when did this happen? How have I not been paying attention to the Vegas Golden Knights? Mm -hmm. And the funny part is, is that there's so many people that are not cheering for Vegas. It used to be Saskatchewan's team. I know. But now, oh, no, I can't cheer for them no, because no. they circumvent the salary cap. It doesn't but matter. Kelly McCrimmon is smart. The rules are the rules. So he just went ahead and used the rules to his advantage. Vegas Golden Knights in Edmonton to take on the Oilers. Now, here's the thing. And I, I, I'm, I don't necessarily have a favorite NHL team. There's a lot of players I'll cheer for. Mm -hmm. But tell me you're not either a bleed hard Oiler or Flames fan, then you're, and you, and you will give me any excuse possible when they don't win or succeed because you'll have a laundry list of them. I'm from Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Okay, and? The Vancouver Canucks. Oh, how, uh, there's Tiger Williams. Tiger okay, Williams, sure. right? There's the tie in there. I say there's not a lot of similarities no, no, no. between Weyburn, Saskatchewan <laughs> and Vancouver, and Vancouver, and Vancouver no, British no. Columbia. I'm no, very true. Say, now, maybe the dining scene may be similar <laughs> in the truck stop <laughs> well, era. I don't think SL. Vancouver's got the all-you-can-eat buffet at KFC, so they're, they're oddly, always a step behind. Oddly enough, you would not believe, no matter where you go and what province you're in, the all-you-can-eat buffet at the KFC yeah. in Wim Weyburn will come up because people will reference that. Yeah, for because sure. Because that is a long-lost art, and especially mm -hmm. with, in this economy, a oh, buffet, yeah. Oh, yeah. a KFC. <laughs> KFC. <laughs> I wonder what the... If somebody could text this in, um, Capital Port Lincoln text line 936 6262 what is the cost of the buffet up to these days? Because KFC's never been cheap. Like, it's never been... No, not, Nothing no. against it, but it's always been... Yeah, higher price. But like, what would the buffet be going for these days? Oh, that would, yeah, that'd be because, interesting. Because um, when we were in uh, in Vegas uh, last year, a lot of the, you know, just because of COVID, a yep. lot of the buffets shut down. And I remember going to the Spice Market buffet in the basement of Planet Hollywood, and it was twenty seven ninety nine, and then there was thirty two ninety nine. I think it was about thirty five bucks the last time we were there. So they had closed down a lot of them. I saw there was one at the Palms left it's 80 bucks i think there's oh. one at caesar's that's 89 i think encore has one um uh and same thing in that 80 90 hundred dollars and i i would love to think i could eat that much yeah but no. I, I can't eat 80 dollars american worth of food I, I I can't. I was gonna say it's probably under ten dollars, but now somebody from Weyburn is gonna text me. No, Dave, here's what it is. Oh actually. no, it can't be ten bucks. Like there's nothing. Like you can't. 
Oh, come on. Nine ninety nine for all you can eat KFC? I bet. No, it has to be. It has to be Weyburn. I'd take the, I'd take the under on that. Okay. Uh, speaking of Vancouver and similar to Weyburn, their sister cities, <laughs> taking on the Arizona Coyotes. Here's the thing with that announcement the other day. Um, how many more times, and I get the Gary Bettman, you can just tell, like, whatever happens, he's making sure that team never leaves. How many more fake arena announcements are they going to have in Arizona? Because now they're trying to win a land lottery just yes. to get the land to build the, before someone goes, I don't think it's ever going to happen here. But the mayor of Scottsdale, Arizona, has come out and said, I'm not in favor of this. I'm not going to rezone this. What are they thinking? And I'm like, oh, no. But apparently there's two schedules out. The schedule makers in the NHL are apparently making two schedules out, one with Arizona playing in Phoenix and one with Arizona playing in Salt Lake City. That is the word. And in Salt Lake Airports. City, you have a rich owner. Yep. You have a rank. Mm -hmm. You can have a built-in fan base. Yep. It's easy travel. You yes. can always get to Salt Lake. And if yeah. you're ever flying to Hawaii, and you can go Calgary, Salt Lake, Salt Lake to Honolulu because you're there by 2 in the afternoon. And if you've ever flown that route, <laughs> they've, jacked, they've jacked the prices on that. It's sidebar. <laughs> but anyways, as opposed to trying to do the Arizona thing again and again, because this, this would have to be fifth or sixth iteration of we're going to get a new rink. Just wait. We need to vote on it or somebody has to pass it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and... It's all about TV numbers, right? The audience that you can deliver in Arizona. And if you look at that surrounding area and the number of eyeballs that they can put watching an NHL broadcast, that's what it's all about. I remember making that mistake. We went to, uh, we actually went to see Kenny Chesney play at the football stadium there in oh, Glendale, okay. where the Coyotes used to play. And we made the mistake, well, it's Phoenix. Okay, it's great. Or whatever. We'll just take a cab from the airport. Oh no! I think it was sixty-five or seventy bucks. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it. Yes, you land in Phoenix, <laughs> but where you were going is nowhere near that. So I can understand why that didn't work with, with that rink out there, because the the travel and the cost, and you're not going to get a lot of people out there. Uh, so the Coyotes are taking on the Canucks, and then the other game, um, Chicago and Connor Bedard is. Has it been a out? good first year i mean he got hurt i mean you know i'd say it, so yeah for him individually for yeah. the team not not so much but chicago's taking on st louis tonight st louis is battling for that final wild card yeah. spot well, the one thing i always worried about with bedard is he's a slight guy it's it's still a man's game it, you know like no there are people that aren't going to take it easy on him mm -hmm. and he's managed well but it's going to be they got to stack that team with some, some, some killers around them just to make sure that nobody goes near them. His vision. His vision is what sets him apart. We had a chance to watch him last year in the seven-game series against Saskatoon. And, well, everybody in Saskatchewan enjoyed him playing for the Pats. And just the way he sees the game, I was like, he's going to get run over. Like, he's going to get destroyed. Because remember how young he is. Yeah. But his vision to assess where people are on the ice gives him that much more like again he's got elite talent and skill but that ability is off the charts because remember when Sidney crosby first came into the nhl and then look how he, he and he's not a big guy but look how he's just through like the, the like working on how he's kind of changed his body shape and mm -hmm. if if but if bedard goes that route where all of a sudden like he just his the quads the leg and everything then okay because sid kind of had to build himself up because he was never going to be able to sustain Yes. In, in a man's game, because when Crosby came in, the game was a lot rougher than it is yeah. now, and yeah. it was able to do that. So here's hoping. I mean, everybody's still cheering for him, and, it, and it's great to see because you're like, you know, it's funny being the Saskatchewan connection. Everybody kind of feels like, yeah, I, I remember seeing. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, Connor. Oh no, I know him. I, yeah. I saw him. Yeah, yeah, no, we were we were huge fans. One more shout out though, just quickly. Uh, yes, we're gonna wrap SJHL, the show here. Humboldt, Melford tonight. Last night they played three overtimes. Tell me, how do you go ahead? You play six periods of hockey, and now 24 hours, less than 24 hours later, you do it again tonight at the Elgar Peterson Arena. You don't Game even four. have time for the laundry to dry. No, like no. Like those poor trainers. Uh-oh. Apparently, it's time to go. <laughs> and apparently, that is it. Hey, thank you for everybody that is tuned in today on 620 CKRM. It's the all-new Sports Cage. And thank you for everybody watching our stream, 620 at the sportscage.com. Um, Curtis, Ryan, the behind the scenes guys, thank you very much. You guys did a great job. To everybody here from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the, the Harvard media team and Justin Dunk who can't stop wooing everybody every time they go by. He's, he's so, I told him you're going to love Ryder. Oh, I don't know. He, I think he's in. He's good. I think. So, uh, and thank you. And don't forget that the podcast will be up later tonight, Spotify and Apple. This has been the Sports Cage live from Studio 620 at Mosaic Stadium on 620 CKRM.
620 CKRM Classified Country is back. We're giving our listeners a chance to attend an exclusive concert that is classified. A mystery artist will be hitting the stage April 27th at the Turvey Center. Until then, it's a secret. Until the moment the performance begins, there are no tickets. The only way you can attend this exclusive concert is by listening to 620 CKRM Classified Country. Sponsored by Reliance Heath Water Heater Rentals, SAS Battery, Regina Motor Products, and the voice of Saskatchewan, 620 CKRM. The Spring Farm Battery Sale is on now at Sask Battery. 